Not yet. Not yet. Oh, on, on your end, you're not ready yet. Okay. Ready? Yes. I would like to advise all those present that notice of this meeting has been provided to the public in accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meeting Act, and that notice was published in the Jersey Journal City website, copies provided, and the Hoboken Report of the Record, the North Star Legend, also placed on the bulletin board in the lobby of City Hall. Written objections from any shall be made to the City Clerk. So the flag. All right, salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, hey, welcome everyone to our Hoboken City Council meeting. Mr. Clerk's going to call the roll for us, see what uh, council members are present and not present. Mr. Cohen? Here. Fusco? Present. Mr. Doyle? Mrs. Falco, Ms. Fisher, Jean Tino, Mrs. Jabor. Here. Mr. Russo. Present. President Ramos. Present. Did I get Falco and I didn't hear him? Falco's here. Councilwoman Falco. Not here. Not okay. All right. Well, anyway, we got a quorum present for the uh, okay. open meeting. Well, thank you, everyone. So, uh, Ms. Bridget, you have your class from All Saints presenting for us this evening. So do you want to kick us off? Yes, absolutely. Um, so thank you so much for having us. This is a project that the fourth graders have been working on all year about dog waste in Hoboken. Um, and I'll have them start us off. So McKenna, you are first. Good evening, members of the City Council, and thank you for taking the time to meet with us. We are the fourth grade class of All Saints Episcopal Day School. As part of our action research class, we chose an issue we see in our community and tried to find ways to fix it. This year, we focused on the issue of dog waste. This was a problem that students at All Saints first studied in 2005 and looked at again in 2011. Even though it has been 16 years, this is still a huge issue in Hoboken. Today, we would like to share with you some of the information we learned and our recommendations for solving this issue in Hoboken. We started our project in September of 2020 by making a list of what we love and what we'd like to improve about Hoboken. Some of the things we loved were the proximity to New York, how walkable the town is, and how we're right near the water. However, one common problem we identified was the, the problem, the issue we, of people not cleaning up after their pets. We felt that the amount of dog waste left out has increased in the past few months as more people adopted pets during the pandemic. From there, we researched the impact that dog waste has on the surrounding environment. We found that dog waste can transmit diseases such as E. coli, ringworm, and salmonella. We also found that young children are more likely to come in contact with dog waste left in the community. In addition, dog waste is classified by the Environmental Protection Agency as a toxin pollutant, the same category as chemical and oil, and is considered the third most common water pollutant in the U.S. It is estimated that two days worth of dog waste from about 100 dogs would contribute enough pollution to close a beach and all watershed areas within 20 miles of it. Finally, we all know there's nothing worse than stepping in dog waste. To learn more about dog waste in Hoboken, we decided to do some community research. We looked at maps of Hoboken, including where pet stations were located. We noticed that there were not a lot of pet waste stations or trash cans on certain streets. We also took to the street and counted the amount of dog waste we observed. One day, we took a walk around our school and found 10 pieces of dog waste within a four block radius of school. We learned that in Hoboken, there is a fine up to $2,000 for not picking up after your dog. In addition, we learned that Hoboken has several pet waste stations, which individuals and businesses could buy and refill. We also reached out to several people for interviews. Ms. Tina Tina from the Hoboken City Council told us that dog waste is a common complaint that she receives from constituents. 
We learned from her that there is this company that tests dog DNA to see where it is coming from. But this method usually works best in small communities. She also spoke to us about curbing your dog, which is a law in New York City. This means that you should have your dog go to the bathroom in the street, which helps keep the sidewalks clean. We also spoke to Ms. Floria, who's on the board at Maxwell Place in Hoboken. She told us about their campaign to educate residents about dog waste. Their campaign focused on three R's, responsibility, respect, and respond. And in her experience, most people try to do the right thing, clean up after their dog. However, people don't always do it properly or may not realize that their dog went to the bathroom. This campaign has been successful in previous years, and they're relaunching it due to the increase in pandemic puppies and many inexperienced owners who didn't know the rules. She also spoke about the effects that dog waste has on Maxwell Place, which includes spending additional money on maintenance and upkeeping, as well as discouraging prospective residents. Then we spoke to Miss Gonzalez, who is in charge of environmental services. She gave us more information about how dog waste can tra- about uh, to give us she told us about the impact of dog waste and gave us more information about how dog waste can transmit diseases. We are pleased to hear that the Hoboken Business Alliance was installing 50 new pet waste stations to our community. In addition, she also said that although there are fines for not picking up after your dog, less than 10 people were fined in the past year. This is because it is difficult to get someone in the act. And I believe Erez is next. Um, I don't think he's here. So I will just read his part. I know I'm not, my presentation skills are not as good as the fourth graders. We also wanted to look beyond our local community and see what other communities were doing to combat this problem. We learned that Union City had pet waste stations located on each block, which were managed by the city and had reduced the dog waste left on the street. They also utilize flyers to educate residents about the importance of cleaning up after their dogs. They try to send out the flyers when they hear from residents that there is an increase in dog waste in the community. The last person we spoke to was (coughs) Carol Ciccarello, who works for a company called Beyond Green, which produces compostable dog waste bags. She spoke with us about the differences between biodegradable and compostable bags and taught us the importance of reading labels to determine that the products we purchase are good for the environment. We also learned that compostable bags, such as the ones from our company, degrade over three to six months, while plastic bags could take over 500 years to decompose. This made us rethink what we were using to clean up after our dogs. In addition to our interviews, we surveyed Hoboken residents to hear their thoughts and insights on dog waste. We just shared our survey to our family and friends and other fourth grade classes and had our adults share it on several social media groups. We received over 900 responses, and the vast majority of respondents agree that dog waste was a big problem in our community. We learned that 40% of the respondents see dog waste at least eight times a week. Only 1.1% of the people said they never see dog waste in the area. One thing we observed was that only 0.1% of the people admitted that they don't pick up after their dogs, which doesn't match up with what we observed. However, when we asked people who had dogs why they hadn't picked up after their dogs, it was because they either forgot or ran out of bed. We think one reason for this result is that people typically clean up after their dogs and consider themselves responsible dog owners, but occasionally are unable to pick up after their pets, and the impact of this adds up. We also asked Hoboken residents what they thought should be done to help encourage people to clean up after their dog. We found that 68% of residents supported higher fines and more pet waste stations. People also brought up suggestions we hadn't thought of before, such as increasing the number of trash cans and giving parking enforcement or other city employees the authority to ticket people for not cleaning up after their dog. In addition, although 92% of residents said they know dog waste is hazardous, 38% of respondents thought there should be more public education about the hazards of dog waste. We also looked at our data by ward and noticed that in wards 3 and 4, less people knew about the hazards of dog waste. In addition, in ward 5, vast majority of residents supported more pet waste stations. 
There are many things that can be done to help encourage people to camp after their dogs. However, the things that stood out to us are enforcement, convenience, and education. Although most Hoboken residents supported higher fines, we discovered that very few tickets are issued each year. As a result, rather than raising the fines, we suggested increasing enforcement and holding people accountable by ticketing people using the current fines of $250 to $2,000. We think that an increase of officials in areas where there's a lot of dog waste will help ensure that people clamp after their dogs. We also think that it is important that the city ensures that pet waste stations are filled and conveniently located. We wonder whether having private businesses and residents be responsible for filling bags is effective and think residents should be responsible and think the city should make sure each station is fully stocked. We also would recommend investing in compostable dog waste bags. Although these bags are more expensive than plastic bags, we are confident that the benefit of these bags outweighs the cost. Finally, we think that ensuring trash cans are conveniently located will help encourage people to pick up after their dog. We've all seen bags of dog waste littering our streets. In particular, we recommend placing garbage cans near pet waste stations to make it even easier for you to clean up after your dog. Finally, we think continued education about the impact that dog waste has in our community will help encourage people to clean up after their dog. We designed the following infographic to distribute through our community. In particular, we plan to focus on distributing this infographic in wards three and four, where we noticed in our survey that fewer people were aware of the impacts of dog waste. We have also noted that the amount of dog waste left out seems to increase in the winter. We would recommend that the city take the time in early winter to educate residents about the impact that the dog waste has and steps they can take if they notice an increase in dog waste, such as calling 311. Finally, we think that making sure that trash cans and pet waste stations are easy to access after it snows will help ensure compliance with these efforts. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our presentation. We hope you will take our suggestions and recommendations into consideration to help us improve our community. We are confident through increased enforcement, convenience, and education, we can improve this issue in our community. Thank you so much for listening uh, to our presentation. Great job, fourth grade. Thank you, guys. Wonderful as always. Really appreciate it. You guys do a great job. The school does a great job preparing you guys for this every single year. We're proud of you. Your parents are proud of you. And I know your school's proud of you as well. Council President? Thank you. Yes. Council Cohen. Just one quick comment. The last time that uh, I was with Amanda Dillon was on the steps of All Saints when the eighth graders presented a $10,000 check to the Hoboken Relief Fund when their trip to Ecuador was canceled. And that's how they decided to put their funds back to the community. I just want to say it's a pleasure to see Amanda and her students, and I'm not surprised they did an exceptional job because it's a very special school. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all, and thank you so much for having us. Fourth graders, you can now um, click leave on the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank, thank you, you for being here, guys. Appreciate the information. Bye. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Happy summer. School's almost out. <laughs> School's been out for a year. Yeah. For some of us, not for all of us. <laughs> all right. Well, are we ready for? Yeah, is this, yes. this is the same. Zoom, we're not logging out and logging back in. Is that correct? That's correct. We're, we're good. The meeting started at 645. It was advertised 645. Yes. Yes. We are ready to roll into our regular business at 7 o'clock, too, so. Yes. It worked out well. Uh, the, the, the public hearing of, uh, for the budget, I assume that's going to be continued. Yes. Okay. Uh, Council, Councilman Fisher is uh, trying to get in as well. That's correct, Jim. Yep. Thank you. So we have a presentation of the Southwest Hoboken traffic circulation changes. Is we have a uh, John Jars in the presentation? Yep. Uh, Rod, Rod, do you see John in the uh, lobby? Awesome. Great. So we had a public meeting uh, a few weeks ago prior to first reading 
regards to potential uh, traffic pattern changes, temporary uh, a pilot for a traffic pattern changes to try and uh, help the flow of traffic in Southwest Hoboken. Uh, Mr. Jar made a presentation that night. I think we had like 30 community members participate in the meeting that night, but we thought it'd be beneficial to have Mr. Jar uh, do the meeting, uh, do the same presentation tonight at our council meeting for everyone to, to see, the general public to see as well, those that may not have been able to attend the meeting that night before we take a vote. Um, members of the council, again, will be able to ask questions. Members of the public will be able to ask questions as well uh, on this item. But let's go, Mr. Jar, to begin our presentation. And then we'll have, we'll go to public questions on resident, uh, our resolutions and ordinances. And Mr. Jar, are you ready, sir? Who's sharing um, the screen? Does he have share screen capabilities? I believe that's one of the items he will need tonight. They, they, they just let me in, so I'm getting my stuff together here. So while, while John kind of gets uh, everything together, I'll kind of just say a few words to provide some background context um, for anyone who may not be familiar with uh, this project or where things stand. Um, so really, uh, this project, when I say this project, I mean um, traffic circulation changes on Patterson Avenue, on Patterson Avenue, and a couple other streets in Southwest Hoboken, uh, re really was born out of a study that goes back a decade. Uh, in 2011, NJTPA commissioned a study called the uh, Hoboken Jersey City Connectivity Study, and the purpose of that study was to uh, do a traffic uh, model and study that looked into improving. Uh, traffic flow and uh, just improving overall connectivity between the southwest qu uh, quadrant of Hoboken and uh, I guess what I'll call northeast Jersey City um, in the area in between that border zone where the Holland Tunnel area is. Um, about five years later, the city of Hoboken commissioned a, uh, a traffic study with uh, Mr. Jar, who will be presenting tonight. Uh, along the same, about the same time that the Southwest Redevelopment Plan was in development. And that study looked at some of the improvements that were suggested uh, at a more macro scale in the 2011 connectivity study. Um, and several recommendations came out of this 2016-2017 study. Um, and several of them have been implemented already back in 2017, including new traffic signals on uh, Observer Highway at Madison Street, Observer Highway in Jackson Street, and Observer Highway and Harrison Street. Um, there were also uh, some other uh, changes and improvements as well, including uh, adding uh, a second travel lane to uh, Harrison Street between uh, Patterson Ave and Observer Highway. A second travel lane was added on Jackson Street between Newark uh, Street and Observer Highway. And a second travel lane was added on Madison Street, that little tiny spur that hooks around uh, behind the firehouse. Um, so, uh, in 2020 or one of the, one of the, the biggest recommendations that came out of that 2017, uh, traffic study was actually what we're discussing tonight, which is converting Patterson Avenue from, uh, two way to one way westbound for two blocks between Monroe street and Harrison street. Uh, Patterson Avenue is a Hudson County road, uh, so it requires, uh, county approval to make this kind of a change, um, and at the time, Hudson County wanted to uh, wait a couple years after all these other improvements were implemented in 2017 and then do a follow up traffic study, which was done um, last year to analyze uh, how effective these improvements were from 2017 and just to kind of calibrate the model to see if everything um, was implemented successfully and kind of as predicted in the 2017 model. Uh, since then, Hudson County has uh, approved a one year uh, pilot to make these changes to Patterson Avenue. Um, and uh, that's kind of where we're at today. So John, are you ready to uh, present with some additional detail? Ready to roll. <clears throat> I thought you were going to do your, your uh, PowerPoint, Ryan, but you pretty much covered everything there. So we're, we're good to, we're good to go. Um, has anybody uh, um, that's here tonight not seen the actual synchro model? I did a number of presentations over the years of the actual technology and, and the little little dots, I think uh, Councilman DeFusco uh, mo most aptly put it as the little dots all over the screen. Yeah. Um, 
I think most of you have seen it. If, if you haven't, um, we're, we're pretty far past that. We don't want to go back there. We're at the final stages of what has been years of trying to improve the Southwest and, and uh, some of the, the challenges. Really, the, the, the main crux of the challenge started on Jackson Street. And Jackson Street was creating gridlock throughout the entire area. Um, <clears throat> we continued to have extremely high accident occurrence at the intersection of Jackson Observer and Harrison and Observer. Prior to the improvements there, I believe Chief Franti told me that those were the two highest accident locations in the city. And then within a week of us installing the traffic lights, he had met me out there and he stood there and he goes, I cannot believe we haven't had an accident here in a week. And then two weeks and then three weeks. I, I think there have been some accidents since we implemented the program, but <clears throat> we've, we've saved probably millions and millions of dollars just in lost uh, losses due to accidents at those locations. The city should really be a uh, uh, simply commended for stepping up and making the circulation in this area significantly better than when we started. Over this process, we've added three brand new traffic lights. In regards to a prescription that was expiring tomorrow, and we have two days left of the... So who's not on mute there, guys, please? Yesterday, Michael, you're not on mute. Prescription sent to me. Let's go, you're not on mute. By Friday, I guess. Back on. So yeah. the, you, you, you've spent over a million dollars in signal improvements, striping improvements, not quite so much on the engineering. We'll work on that. But all said and done, we're at the final stages. <clears throat> our, our model has over and over again, the, what Ryan didn't mention is that the honest truth is, is even some of the council people were a little questioning, is this really going to work, John? You know, some of this stuff is not intuitive. You know, adding a traffic light, that's going to make things better. Yeah, it did. So, um, you know, some of it's been some counterintuitive thinking. And I think this is like the next step where this is going to be a little bit of a struggle for everyone because we're saying that taking the traffic heading southbound towards, you know, southbound or eastbound towards the city off of those two blocks of Patterson is actually going to help things. And the reason for that is, is we continue to have that bottleneck at the five-legged intersection at Monroe, Observer, and Patterson. When we can take that green time and, and get that extra leg off, we're going to take that time and we're going to program it in throughout the rest of the system and we're going to get another little bit of a bump and improvement. Every time we've done something, it's been a 10 or 20% improvement, 10 or 20% improvement. This is going to be a very noticeable improvement because we got the other ones in place. We put the left turn lane in by the park. Please understand the first few weeks of this, we're probably going to get some complaints at the intersection of Patterson and Harrison until people reacclimate themselves and get used to the new traffic flow. I'm sure there's going to be a little confusion, a little bit of challenge. But once they get used to it, that extra green time and that is energy that we've all put into this is going to really pay off for us. We're going to see some real, real long-term the improvements we've done have helped a lot. This will be the longest lo longest term of the improvements because this will help us for many years to come. Um, John, so John, that's what, what regarding the Patterson one way? John, excuse me, one second, John. Uh, a lot of some constituents have reached out and said, "How?" And just answer this question. I know you will. Uh, between my goodness, uh, Monroe and Harrison, we're making it right there. Where it's going from one two lanes to one lane. Right, and we're going to free that bottleneck up in Monroe, that five corners area. So, I think how how going from we're still going from two to one from well, Harrison going up Patterson. to Marshall. Yes, but then then it's going back to one lane between Harrison and Marshall. So, how is that going to flow at that location? Is that going to be another bottleneck? Is what people no, have. No, no, uh, we're we're, we're bringing two lanes all the way up to the light rail, Councilman. Okay, because starting it, at Patterson and Monroe, there's going to be a continuous two travel lanes all the way up to Monroe. I mean, all the way up to the light rail. As people were, were confused by that with regards to the way the presentation. Uh, you see the two lanes here, but you should have the red arrow as opposed to a blue arrow going. The, the red, uh, the red, right, so, so I guess for the key here is, is red only means change. Blue yeah, means okay. travel patterns stay the same. The actually, you have to zoom in really close to actually see the lanes. So we have two yep. lanes. 
two lanes, two lanes, two lanes, all the way up to the railroad. Yep. See? Two lanes all the way up to the railroad. What the, the blue and the red are are the, the larger view, so it was easy for us to present to everybody so you all could see um you know what the changes are. Anything in red is a change, and anything in blue is a consistency. Okay. That's staying the same. But to know what number of lanes there are underneath, you have to zoom in real closely. So exactly. See it all. So, so people weren't able to see that. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, hopefully that clears that clears up that concern. Thank for you. That, that does. Thank you. Um, that was. Are there any other uh, any other concerns? Now's a good time to you know any other concerns regarding Patterson because I'm going to jump over to Marshall. Okay, great. On to Marshall. So when we're doing all this modeling, we've got this like really really expensive computer model. And I think everybody's heard my story about when we first did the turn on and I had the little thumb drive and the guy put it in and within like a, like 15 minutes, all of a sudden, everything started to work. It was amazing. I was very excited. And of course, you guys know I get a little excited about this stuff. So um, this is one of those things that came out of that model. When we're doing the modeling, a, a few things jumped out. One was we kind of had the same uh, situation at first, Patterson and Marshall with a multi-leg intersection that was stealing green time from the rest of the system. There is not a, a heck of a lot of traffic that comes out of Marshall. And Marshall is an ongoing complaint by many residents for people that follow the rules, they stay in their lane to make a right turn, people will pass them on the left and make a right turn right around in front of them. It's been an ongoing problem. It, it's, it's really, really a challenge. The reason for that is when the light rail changes, the light rail comes, it causes excessive delays at that intersection. Now, just so you know, it does cause excessive delays on the other side of the railroad, too. It's not just us that get excessive delays. The way the light is programmed, and we're going to have a little bit of a change to that when we do this implementation, is when the light rail comes, it resets back to zero at Patterson Avenue. So if, for example, Marshall Street was just about to get the green light and the light rail came, they lose their chance for the green light. They, 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 so they had to wait the entire time they were waiting in the first place. Now they got to wait for another whole Patterson Avenue to clear, and then they get the green light. So it's a really – sometimes the wait times can be over two minutes. And it's just the way preemption works. There's really strict rules and laws that we have to follow about that. But our model it had, had – what had jumped out of the model that if we made this change, number one, <clears throat> it's going to give us some more green time to put back into the system. And number two, it's going to add um, some parking on Marshall – and get that Marshall Street to work a little better. Now, the downside is we have to take two blocks of Second Street and make it two-way. So when all is said and done, we kind of get a, a net, maybe one or two spaces added between losses on Second and pluses on Marshall. Um, it's going to be tight. Second Street is a narrow road. Um, it's only about 26, 27 feet wide. So we're going to have two 10-foot travel lanes, a six-foot parking lane. This is a very common um, lane configuration throughout the rest of the city of Hoboken. Many, many, many of our roads are only 26 feet wide. Um, but I want everybody to know what we're getting into. So we are going to have, you know, there may be some people that are going to complain that it's narrow, but this is, this is a common occurrence throughout the city. We feel confident that this will work safely and efficiently. There isn't a lot of traffic on this section of Second Street. And they're really um, taking those right, turn, taking those movements off of Marshall, coming out onto First and Patterson, is going to give us such a nice improvement for everyone. It's going it, to, you know, it's one of those things where it's better for the greater good. Um, and those are the two main changes that that were were, were were presented to you this evening. Um, as far as the history of this goes, I think you all have have heard at nauseum all of the history. You've all had to live through Jackson Street backing up all the way to the, to the Holland Tunnel. Um, you know, we we've all you know, been been through this for, for quite some time. Some of the other things are going to get incorporated or um, modified that um, I'm going to use this plan because it's going to be a little easier instead of flipping around. I can be much more quick and efficient with it. So um, one of the things that we have some concerns with is cars making turning movements. So on the uh, far corner of Harrison Street for cars to make a right turn, we've taken um, uh, we've put some enhanced striping in here. There already isn't parking allowed there, but we're enhancing that to further discourage parking in this one little section here, so cars can more easily make that right turn. <clears throat> and Chuck, um, we also discussed uh, some safety measures, uh, additional safety measures on that corner because there are three daycare centers on all those corners there as well. 
Yeah, yeah. There's there's day there's there's such a preponderance of daycares. Um, yeah. Actually, this whole thing. I, I believe is there one here on the corner. Or yeah, there's, there's one. There's there's one here on this corner. Right here. Of, of first and Marshall. There's one on the corner second yeah. and Marshall, and there are three on the corner of second and, and Harrison. Here. Yep, yep. There's quite a few, and there's a lot of folks that are walking around with strollers and carriages. So we really do want to be careful. So we are enhancing, and and to that end, all of these crosswalks are getting enhanced. We're adding, uh, you know, new uh, bright, brightly striped crosswalks at these locations. Um, we do have some bump out area that you know we're we're hopefully narrowing a little bit. You can see here at at um, Harrison, uh, uh, Jackson Street, That's we're adding a bump out on both sides to get the crossing a little bit narrower and give us some room to, to work out there. Um, and John, don't forget the always stops. Yep. And the other thing is, is um, all of these intersections warrant an all way stop. So you're, so right now you have through streets. We don't, we're no longer going to have that configuration because we're changing the flow and based on the traffic volumes and the MUTCD requirements, we're able to validate stop signs on second street at all three locations. So there's going to be stops at all three. This should significantly help to calm the traffic. The crosswalks are going to be a big visual bump to the drivers out there that are not used to seeing those, those really bright crosswalks. Um, and adding the stop signs will further help, you know, to get everybody to pay attention to what's happening on the road. Um, I, I think that's pretty much everything, Ryan. You want to add a few more details or I'm, I'm not yeah. really sure. With I don't want to have, to have the – have to give too much to the to take too much time with the council. Yeah, John, can you talk one more issue, John, that people have uh, concerned about is backup on Harrison Street between Harrison and Patterson going back because sometimes that does get uh, backed up. We're putting more traffic onto Harrison onto Harrison. We have to make that right hand turn on Patterson Avenue, so people are concerned about a backup on Harrison Street as well. Okay. So we've done a few things to enhance that. So the, the first and most prominent thing is, as Councilman Ruben uh, Ramos uh, explained, we're going to now take the traffic off Patterson for these two blocks and now force everyone to make a right turn on Harrison. So in our last phase of the work, we added an exclusive left turn lane along the park onto Observer Highway. So we have, a, we have already accounted for the additional capacity needed to move the cars off of Patterson on to Harrison and then over to Observer. So that was done in the last phase of the project. There is, however, still another challenge for everyone. And that is even still to today, the traffic will back up here on Harrison all the way up to Patterson. That's even without us taking the two blocks out of Patterson. Today, without adding the extra traffic onto Harrison, making the right, we have an existing situation where traffic is backing up. And the main reason for that is people are still challenged at the intersection of Harrison and um, Newark Avenue. So what we're going to do is we have, we have, we're going to do further enhancements to our last plan at this location. First of all, the stop bar is not supposed to be there. It's, been, it's being eradicated. So that you're no longer going to see that stop bar. Uh, there's a yield sign here. This is a yield condition, not a stop condition. This is a lane ad. People coming down Harrison have their own lane to be in. And what happens is they don't really get that they have that. So we're going to enhance the striping in this area. We're going to put additional, um, the lineator posts. I'm sure you've seen them all over the city. We use them in many places to prohibit parking. They're about four, three and a half, four feet tall, orange with some stripes on the top for reflectivity. And we're going to run them from, from the crosswalk down onto um, Newark Avenue up to the first trestle bridge to where essentially Hoboken's property line is quote unquote. What it is, is we're, we're trying to, we're, although Jersey City has been on board with us and they gave us permission last year to restripe um, about three weeks ago now, um, they actually had their own forces restripe underneath the bridge. They called me because they didn't have the most recent plan. They knew to call me. I was able to go out and meet with their folks. They did a great job. We, that's a, a good step in the right direction. It helps us, but we still need to improve this area here to get that traffic to flow a little more smoothly. And yes, People still come down Harrison and try to make a left turn. I think that maybe in the future, if this next step doesn't solve that, the, and I'm sure that the um, whoever our new chief of police will be will, will work with me on this, we may need to actually put a concrete island at this location. It may be the only way we stop drivers from trying to make a left turn here. All it takes is one driver 
and it could cause the Harrison Street to back up all the way to Patterson. And I, I have I can't I can't do anything about that. That's other than yeah. you know if we if this doesn't do it, then I'm going to have to come back to you guys in the future and say we're going to have to build some concrete here. It won't be terribly expensive, but it will help to solve the problem. I hopefully that hopefully that that answers the Harrison Patterson. Uh, changeover question. Do we uh, get a councilman? Yeah, I, I understand this. When people understand it, as, as they're watching at home uh, as well. Uh, any other council members have any questions for Mr. Jar? I do. Who, I can't see everyone. Who, it's who's Tiffany. That? It's Hi, Tiffany. Councilman Fisher. Yep. And I actually put my hand up, like you always tell me to. Uh, yeah, but um, I don't have the, the whole. Uh, um, can you go back to Second Street for a second? You caught my attention on something that I, I didn't. Um, I wasn't aware of you, you, on the, the two new blocks of second street, you said they're 26 feet wide, two 10 foot travel lanes and a six foot parking lane. Yes. And you said that that's the case all over Hoboken or in other areas yeah. of Hoboken. Can you point yes, to a nut weight? Can not, not just a 26, but that feels very tight. Like I feel like yes. we all strive to have 11 foot travel lanes. And I thought a parking lane was nine feet. Okay. Desirable is 12 feet and the parking lane desirable is eight feet. Those are the desirable widths. Um, typically we don't use nine feet. We, the typical parking, uh, parallel parking is we, we desirable is eight. Um, seven is very, very commonly used, but eight is desirable. Travel lanes are desirable at 12, 12 feet. Ashtel allows us to reduce travel lanes to 10 feet and they allow us to reduce parking lanes to six feet. That is the absolute bare minimum that the guidance tells us we can do. I agree with you. It is very tight. All right. Um, but I believe that it will work. And I believe that, once again, uh, this is an overall improvement for the entire quadrant. So by us giving up um, these two streets to two-way traffic, we're making a significant improvement throughout the rest of the system. Do we have, though... Do we have any like public safety concerns about, you know, some of the bigger like fire trucks going through there? So good point. That's my next question, Council. Good if you have, yeah, if you have just what, just in one travel lane, you have a car, an SUV, just you know, not a tiny car, but like an average size whatever car in one travel lane, you have a car parked in an already too narrow parking lane. How does the width of like a truck, for example, like a large truck or a fire truck get through here and maybe they don't go through. Well, I mean, they must have to go through here because there's buildings around it. It may not be a main thoroughfare, um, but I, that I'm, have we gotten public safety sign off on that? John, do you want so, me to jump in? Uh, sure, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, so I, I think when you look at second street here, this is probably the one part of the plan that uh, the parking in particular that that may need a little bit of tweaking kind of as we go forward. And I think that's kind of the overall theme of the entire project, right? Like right now you're seeing a, a one year pilot project that's been designed and mo most of this here is going to be implemented as you're seeing right now. Um, but inevitably there are going to be a little bit of tweaks that are going to be needed once everything is rolled out and we see how everything is working. I think Second Street is probably the, the number one example of that because you're right, uh, a six foot parking lane and two 10 foot travel lanes is extremely tight. And that may be something that requires a little bit of tweaking. Uh, one way to possibly address that is to actually prohibit parking in a bit of a checkered pattern throughout the corridor or throughout those two blocks um, what you're doing there is you're effectively creating pull-off zones. Uh, it's kind of like a more suburban yield street. If you, you know, these are streets that are very common throughout New Jersey where you have, um, you know, parking on both sides. It's a two-way street and there, there's no center line striped in the middle of the road. Uh, and two car, you know, cars going in, in, in two directions kind of negotiate the space. And if, if we, they don't think one or both can fit, one kind of pulls off into a pull off zone and lets the other one go by. I'm sure we've all experienced that at some point. Um, you know, if we've driven around, uh, you know, somewhere in Hoboken or, 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 or uh, in New Jersey and, and all over the country, really. Um, 
So, so that, that would be one potential option. If we do feel that a six foot parking lane and two 10 foot travel lanes is too tight. Um, and then because it's two way and not one way, you do still have, you know, 20 feet minimum of uh, travel lane width. So that would effectively allow, uh, you know, an emergency vehicle fire truck example to kind of get through that space. Uh, without you know physical restriction, especially if you have these pull-off zones scattered throughout the two blocks. Um, and, and the nice thing is, even if you were to do that, and it involves removing a few parking spaces in addition to, to the parking spaces that have already been removed in these two blocks, as John mentioned earlier, you're getting almost all of that parking back by by uh, converting On Street. to one way. Yeah. And then if you go, actually scroll down to Patterson, yeah. You're adding yeah. another 15 parking spaces or so on Patterson on the south or west side, depending on your orientation there. Um, so you're, you're going to end up with a net gain here in parking spaces uh, in this area, even if you were to remove all the parking on 2nd Street for those two blocks. Um, so these are just the little considerations that I think need to be kind of considered well, carefully as we move forward. Mm. I, I, I just, like, as we're talking, um, I just looked up, like, with, I have no idea the width of, like, an SUV or a truck. And so, like, you know, any, any larger SUV, like a Toyota Tundra, a Nissan Titan, their widths are already, like, 80 inches, which is seven and a half feet. So are you contemplating that this parking is only going to be for compact cars? Because how do you, how, how will that practically work if just whatever, a large SUV sees a parking spot and they pull in and, you know, they get, even if they go all the way up to the curb, right? So it's a full six feet. And just by pulling in, they're a foot and a half hanging over into the road. Like what, what's the, I understand, Ryan, like the concept of tweaking, but like, I, I feel like we should understand that tweaking before we approve this. Otherwise we could have a row of cars that are literally obstructing which is now a narrow 10 feet. Now there's only eight and a half feet. And at eight and a half feet, these trucks might not even be able to go through it. It feels, it just feels that, too that, tight. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, an oncoming vehicle, correct? Yeah, we're, we're just, alternate. Okay, so let's, I think, I think that Ms. Fisher has some, some very good concerns. So I think what we should do is just take a moment and let's zoom in and let's brainstorm together to make sure that we resolve these matters in an amicable way. So the first thing I want to point out is we don't have to have parking on these two blocks. If we take out the parking altogether, sure. we're still going to have a net about the same number of spaces in this southwest quadrant. We added a significant number of spaces on Patterson by the park and a significant number of spaces on Marshall Street. So it will not, and, and considering the way it works now with PSCNG, when they were doing the work, they took all the parking and, and how many spaces were actually being able to be used by our residents when it was one way, it isn't going to be a huge, you know, uh, you know, again, it's going to be more about a net zero we, we, if we get rid of the parking entirely here. I do believe we, we actually in the neighborhood still gain a space or two if we got rid of it all. So the first option would be if we really feel that this is too narrow, and we don't want to, you know, have that, then my recommendation is say, let's just make it two, two way. We'll do two 13 foot lanes and be done with it. Now, I honestly think that the residents would probably rather have the parking and the serpentine pattern that we've created. So the other part that I think that you may, may that when he's going through your head, he's saying, oh my goodness, people drive so fast. That's because of one way street and people do yeah. drive too fast yeah. sometimes. What we've also done is some track, some, some very, um, subtle and not obvious traffic calming techniques here. One of the things we did is in the first block between Jackson and Harrison is we have the through traffic heading towards the light rail on the right-hand side of the road. We pushed everybody up. Okay. So now all the traffic is pushed against the other side of the road. We put the parking on the lower side of the road where it appeared that it would, we'd get the most spaces out of it. That's the reason why we chose that area. All right. Now, on the next block between Harrison and Marshall, we did it the other way around. We pushed the, we pushed the travel lane down to the, to, to the lower end. We're creating 
uh, a serpentine pattern through the intersection to slow everybody down and get some traffic calming. That's very subtle. The, the other, the other um, item that's happening here is, again, low volume streets. I totally agree that it's tight. It's very, very tight. I think it's worth a try. But if you feel mm -hmm. that, that it, it won't work, we could, we, it, it's really very, at this juncture, it's of no consequence uh, to simply remove the parking and do two, two 13 foot lanes. Yeah. All right. Uh, um, I do think that it's going to work, but if it, do, but if it doesn't, we also have the ability to immediately grind off the stripe. It's, it's only paint and remove yeah. the parking yeah. and put it in. Yeah. So, one of the, one of the things, John is, uh, and I guess for everyone, it's more of a statement is, uh, what gives me confidence is the, is the modeling that we saw with all the small dots and seeing this move around. But again, that doesn't put what Councilman Fisher is talking about, the X factor, the human factor in there, and these larger vehicles that, that, go, down, that go down the road. So can we just say like a compact vehicles parking only, like certain size vehicle parking for That's a great idea. those two blocks or, or something like that? Uh, if you guys are okay with that, that, that for sure makes us go golden. Uh, the other thing is that we're gonna probably have to do, like Ryan, as Ryan was explaining, but, but so, I, I really could, wanted, so can you can you run that through your numbers then, John? Like a comp compact parking only, how that would, you know, that create more more smaller cars parking in that area as well, make another spot additional spot or two. But how yeah. how are we gonna have parking enforcement like you know enforced? So it makes it more difficult for our traffic enforcement agents as well. I don't. But I, if we could just look at it, that, I don't think it has to. I don't think cars. it has to be like an, an enforcement necessarily issue. Sorry, I don't think it has to be an enforcement issue per se. I think it's more just um, something that suggests that it's narrow parking lane, like cars can't park over the line. So something that would indicate to a car pulling in that they need to kind of fit within that width, whatever it Practice, is. Uh, and it's, their and parking it's, before they park there. <laughs> become, yep. become a parking guru. Oh, well, the thing yeah. is, 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 don't we want anyway. to encourage people to be in smaller cars encourage them to use electric cars and encourage them to have a, a smaller carbon footprint um this would be definitely a very statesman like way to do that if yeah. uh, if for these two blocks we were to po simply post it as compact park car parking only that eliminates our concern about the the, the larger the larger vehicles that that um that tiffany had, had, had mentioned um yeah miss fisher do you feel comfortable with 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 that as a uh an, a yeah, solution I, I definitely do. I, I listen, I, I recognize it's a pilot. I, it's not my corner. Um, these are the kind of little things that I end up nitpicking about, but I, I am concerned that we'll have cars just overhanging in what's already a narrow right away. So if it's a pilot and with that, like, let's just do our best and um, let's do our best. So, yeah. Well, consider it done. We shall, we shall incorporate that into our, uh, our plan. Uh, the plan will stay as is, but the parking will only be for compact cars. Any other questions from the council? John, right, what, have <laughs> John what, one, more, uh, one, more, one more question, John, uh, is the, the, the ongoing, after this past, it's implemented, it's put into place, uh, how are you going to study the outcomes here? Uh, the tangible data that you're going to collect after this, the plan is implemented? Well, it's, it's going to be the same as, as <clears throat> uh, in the previous studies. Of course, you all know that the county has been very disbelieving of our, our study. <laughs> and it, it's been, it's been a, um, um, quite a challenge to convince them to see our way. Um, the good news is, is the folks in Jersey City are, are, are very happy with us because they, they were a little skeptical at first as well. And, and they've seen the improvements. Um, we're going to do the same thing as last time. When we're all done, after the pilot's implemented, um, hopefully we'll be out of the, the, the horribleness of COVID and probably sometime around September, um, maybe a little after that October, hopefully I'll get the green light from you guys to go out and do the after study. <clears throat> and what we'll do is we're going to go out and do traffic counts and we're going to do the travel time delay study where I have a guy who drives his car all through the system and he oh. notes how much time it takes from place to place. And we have the data from all the different studies to, to compare it to. Shouldn't we, should we have that in place now? Like, okay. It gets implemented July 1st. We're saying on September 4th or 5th, you know, the day after Labor Day, we're going to be out there and collect the data. Should we just like be prepared for that now as a council? 
to adopt something that says you're out there to collect data. Uh, I'm going to that one up for Ryan. Yeah. Ryan, shouldn't we do that? Dr. Sharp? What, what are you, spe what's the specific ask? Sorry. Uh, ju just to, to the, the after, the after study, you know, to, to see if this is working or not. Like what's the data we're going to collect to make sure this is an effective uh, plan. So Hudson County, uh, as part of their condition of approval for this one, one year pilot uh, conversion of Patterson Ave actually laid, is laying out um, the metrics that need to be studied in a follow-up analysis. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, so that's already been negotiated with yeah. Hudson County. It's a condition of approval. And should we have, a, should we have those dates in now, like uh, on our end to make sure like, you know, we're not, we're not coming here. Hey, you need an emergency resolution to add. Uh, for this Wednesday's council meeting on September. That way we know it's already coming in the pike for August. That's already approved. That's what I'm saying. Well, we would need to uh, prepare a separate contract for uh, mm -hmm. the follow-up study. Yep. Um, so so, that's, so we, if we know we need the follow-up study, let's prepare that contract now yeah. and already give John a start date to carry our end of the second bargain, bargain with the county. I know listen, we, we, myself, John, yourself, we, we worked, uh, you know, we almost literally moved mountains with Jersey City and the county to get them to see uh, what we want to do here, try and long term to get their buy in. It took us a couple of years to do it. So, we're, we're, and hopefully we're, we're getting their buy in with the next phase of the plan as well. So, uh, you know, that, that is the ultimate connection with the 2011 study. So, hopefully, uh, let's just get that in the hopper sooner rather than later, is my point. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. We were waiting to get to this point before spending more money on engineering. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, sorry, and, John. And, and then, uh, then uh, one, one last point before we move on is the uh, the city bike rack that uh, that you and I spoke about on Monday. That will be moved, correct, uh, as implementation of this plan as well. That's on the corner of Second and and Marshall. Yeah, that will have to get moved around the corner onto Marshall. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one, one last. Can, point. Can, we, can we can we put that in the circle so it doesn't take any of the parking spots that, that uh, we're trying to gain? There's no parking in the circle, the traffic circle. Uh, 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 you're saying up by the light rail? Yes, there's a, there's a city bike rack there that we that uh, will have to be moved. So that's New Jersey Transit property, and they're okay. very protective about uh, putting things in their space. It's something that we we can and will explore. It's just going to take them. It could take months and months to to get an answer one way or another. Okay. Um. So in the meantime, I'd be happy to to you know work with you on you know, surgically sighting that station around the corner. Thank you. Um, and, and then the councilman, the councilman's request really ties into another issue we have with transit, Ryan. And there's three things we need other than that from them. We need them to be reminded to train their train drivers to get them to stop cross stopping on the tracks. Yes. And um, Chris Brown's group um, has requested multiple times assistance from them for information on the right of way um, right over here in the corner uh, where the tra where the where we make the hard left turn there's a small parcel of information that we still need to get for um, some other other important city business and there's a deed that we need to get for right here at the corner for some other business so maybe we can combine all four of those asks and try and kill four birds at one stone yeah, and we'll, yeah, we're aware of those. Uh, let's let's and, do that. I'd be happy to help if you if you if you'd like me to. Yeah, and then that area of Jefferson Street's already part of the. You know, we're already looking at that as well. So that that works. Let's yep. let's do that. One one last thing I want to mention that I think is important here in the overall context that the timing of everything here. Uh, so Patterson Avenue for these two blocks that that we're showing here. Um, between Harrison and Monroe are actually on the county's uh, paving schedule for 2021. So uh, if we move for forward with implementing this uh, pilot conversion uh, of Patterson from two-way to one-way, uh, we'll be able to do it at a significant reduction in cost because of that, right? Um, and then at the same time, Marshall uh, Street between first and second is on the city's paving list for 2021. So uh, same for that, for that conversion from two way to one way, um, another opportunity to, to implement that, uh, in the coming weeks at a significant reduction in, in overall cost. Um, 
So uh, everything is aligning very nicely here uh, in, in this moment. I think it's just kind of worth worth, worth mentioning. And the last point, uh, Ryan, let's not forget about the New Jersey Transit Capital Improvement Plan, which raises the light rail uh, tracks as well for $126 million. Hopefully we could help them uh, get a federal funding to, to see that project through. And that really is a game changer for the entire area. So. Yep, I've already communicated with, with Jersey City yep. uh, on uh, working together to, to get support for that. Um, we, the, at the last council meeting, uh, city council adopted a resolution in support of uh, the grade separation project on Patterson Ave, which would uh, uh, eliminate the conflict that we have right now with the light rail crossing over Patterson. Um, yeah. And, and so, so there, there, there's so many moving parts in this area. Uh, converting Patterson from two way to one way and the conversion to Marshall and second street is not going to solve everything, mm -hmm. but it's going to chip away at things. And then we can kind of pivot to the bigger picture, more expensive capital projects, uh, such as the grade separation. Yeah. yeah. And, and this doesn't mess with Cal's hot dog stand. Now that I see that corner again, up close, we, we, we can't mess with a yes. public institution there either. <laughs> no. so, Although right. Cal's technically in Jersey city. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we named the corner after him, so <laughs> well, we, we, we own him. We'll take it. <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Certainly, and of course, you know that Ryan and I are always available for questions. If any, you guys have anything else that comes up, don't ever be afraid to pick up the phone and give us a call. No, I appreciate harassing you, John. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for everything, everyone. Thank you. Be well. All right, now we have... Uh, Public portion, uh, residents and or resolutions and ordinances. Public Members of the portion. public that will, that will like to speak in resolutions and ordinances, please raise your hand. And I believe Mr. Clerk, uh, Mr. Lohr will let you in. Is that correct tonight? Mr. Lohr is in charge. Thank you, Pat. Welcome, Pat. Okay, could you hear me? Yes, welcome. Oh, I, thank you. Thank you, uh, Council President Ramos. Um, am I on agenda items on that long link? Yes, you, yes, you talk are. About the, about the traffic study. First of all, I'm feeling some kind of way about that because um, this traffic study you're talking about, is this partly on a county road? This, yeah. Uh, Yes. Is on the county and um, uh, with respect to um, Director Sharp, because he don't pay attention to nothing else I say, but is this going to on tonight for first reading? Is this is up for, um, are you going to vote on this tonight? It's on second reading tonight. We had, we had a, a public meeting, it was on first reading last meeting, and then uh, second reading is tonight. All right. And you act, they asking tonight for money for this study though, right? To hire these people to do the study. They asked him for money. Am I right? No, not no money tonight. No. All right. So this just somebody come in and out of town to do a study for free. No, we, we already uh, uh, initiated the, that with other parties. Right. But that's what I'm saying. But let the public be aware of what's going on. That's what I'm saying. I mean, right before the pandemic, I heard a little bit about it, but I want to know tonight who is the contractor? Who I mean, who's the person that's coming to do the study and, and what is the money amount? I know they're not doing it for free. And for far too long, parking utility got a lot of little sneak, sneaky games and stuff going on. And you know that, and I've been saying this forever. And right now with all the little politicking going on in our town, I need people that's watching this to understand exactly what's going on. So you can't give me a money amount, council president. Uh, Mr. Director Sharp, I don't know, I'm not sure the I can't remember. Well, no, hold him accountable. He's your director. You're absolutely right. Let Director Sharp explain. We waited patiently. You took up the public's time and let that man do his whole presentation. Now, Director Sharp is the director getting paid by our tax dollars. Let him explain to us the amount of money, okay, and who are these contractors that's coming in to do this study. And by law, that's right. That's only right. As our, as our director and you guys are the councilmen, hold him accountable. Let him explain to people that's watching this because I want to know. Yeah, sure. Hi, Patricia. 
Uh, so the, the city awarded a contract to Brightview Engineering to do this follow-up study uh, that we, we mentioned during the presentation a few months ago. And that contract, I believe, was for $88,000. <laughs> $88,000, right? And I, like I said, earlier, I remember this, like, like it was yesterday, prior to the pandemic, you was talking about the people coming in for a study. I need the people to know $88,000, five weeks prior to going into election, all of the games Park and Utility be playing with funds and taxes and everything else. Okay, I don't like it. It's wrong. $88,000. You know what that could do in our city with other places that need the help? I'm very uncomfortable about this, but like you said, like I said, you've been ignoring me for the last two years with, on all issues and matters of concern. It's time for all of you council people to put on your big boy drawers and do what you got to do. Now, right is right. It's not fair for us living here and you take a known disregard to what we say, no matter what I'm saying tonight, but I want it placed on the record. You're going to do what you want to do anyway. And it's wrong and it's disingenuous. And that's what I wanted to do. Wanted this to be made loud and clear on a record. $88,000 or a million, whatever you said the amount is. Shame on every council person to vote yes on this. But you're going to do it, especially the ones that support and Robbie for the election. I'm, I'm, my hand is still raised because I have some other issues when the public portion come. Is there anything else on the agenda pertaining to the HHA appointment? No. Before, there's nothing pertaining to HHA appointment. Not tonight, no. Okay, but I can speak about it. Yes. Did we lose her? Hello? Do we lose everyone? Okay, we lost. Okay. Okay. She said she was going to come back later, but hopefully. Yeah, she just dropped. Okay. Uh, uh, next speaker, Rod. Welcome, Hi there, Chris. it's Chris Five minutes. Welcome. Hi there. Um, I just wanted to briefly comment on uh, what Director Sharp was talking about. I kind of came in a little bit late, but... Um, just to kind of remind everyone that the protected bike lane that we have as part of kind of that NJ transit path that kind of goes into Jersey City ends at Second Street. So I know there's been some discussion about the green circuit and making sure that we get the protected bike lane loop uh, in place when we're discussing a lot of the Western development and the North End development. But right now it ends at Second Street. So I would urge you to, um, you know, if it sounds like people are concerned about the amount of space down there, I would urge you to not be so concerned about the parking there and create a connection to that protected bike lane that ends at that second street light rail and then then de determine how that's going to continue north, which is not, you know, we, we don't know how that continues north, but we do know that even once that western redevelopment happens at 9th Street, uh, you know, over there by Monroe or whatever is going to go in there, uh, west of the shop, right? We've got to connect it in somehow. So please keep that in mind um, as something that that we need down there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good comment. Hi. Good evening, Council. Can you hear me? Hey, Cheryl. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm speaking on the the redevelopment zones and the um, resolution to consider something as a redevelopment zone. Um, and some of these are questions. If we could get answers, I guess it would be. Which, which item is that, Cheryl, specifically? Because there's one item removed. The, well, there's the Newman Lather I'm going to be speaking okay. on. And is it Southwest redevelopment or is it public works? I can't keep them straight. There's so many. There's, I think Southwest okay. has, correct? And well, then, Newman Lather is removed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then my remarks are shorter. Good. Yep. <laughs> um, is it Southwest or Public Works? The one that's on for second I reading? Think both. Both. I think they both. Okay. Well, then. Well, then I think that one of them has. Um, God, I don't know which ones it was. There's one that has the 
the affordable housing in addition to the the workforce housing in, in addition. Is that Newman Leather? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Okay. No? So that's off. So one of the, the the developments has 25 additional affordable, like in other words, more units being added, including 25 affordable. Which one is that? That's a that's oh, Southwest. Southwest. Yes. Yep, Southwest? Southwest. Yep. Okay. Um, so the question I have on that is, um, I my understanding is the units are getting smaller, um, and Correct. in in terms of if if we could the citizenry could get a breakdown in terms of three bedrooms, two bedrooms, one bedrooms, and studios on that. And the reason I and I don't want one bedrooms or studios. I actually want the breakdown. The reason I ask is because studios tend to be transient and we're adding a lot of inventory and um, I'm just concerned about the transient nature of the town. So if somebody has a breakdown on well, that. Director Brown has the breakdown. Director Brown. Uh, so I don't have a breakdown yet. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's uh, it, we haven't got received any plans from from Academy for that project. Correct. Um, okay. But actually, Bashar, I think or Mstalik, I think to your point, um, you're looking for uh, the breakdown for affordable units. Um, uh, yes, but I I also in sort of gen yes I am I'm interested in that, but I'm also sort of generally concerned about the transient nature of the community when we're adding hundreds upon hundreds of new units. So I would actually like both if possible. So I could get you the breakdown, the affordable breakdown um, tomorrow. I just need a little time to look at the ordinance and run it by our administrative agent because based on the, number, the unit count, we can then figure out like what the affordable breakdown would be um, for the Southwest. But as far as what their overall unit distribution would be, I, I, I'm not sure. Um, I, I appreciate that, Director. Of course, then I don't know what to say in terms of whether I think you should approve this or not. That's to the council. That's not directed at you. Um, with regard to all of the rest of it, I guess my next question is, when does the council get that? And what can you do if it turns out to be 300 studios? Like, what can the council do if they're voting on second meeting now? Um, well, it's, it's the council president. Yeah, Councilman Doyle. I, I believe... Uh, Director Brown, isn't there an average size that is agreed to? So, yeah. which so, is, you yeah, know, I mean, a this, lot bigger than a studio. So, yeah, I mean, the, in the, for the Southwest plan, um, they part of the settlement agreement. They there's certain parameters that they have to build to, and those parameters, um, those parameters are outlined uh, outlined in the plan. The Southwest plan has an average unit size of 1,200 feet per unit, which is considerably How many larger. Houses are they are there in? in I'm sorry, say it, say it one more time. How many penthouses are there? Just, you know, the Ten. concept of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar walking into the city council chambers and suddenly the average goes way up. Of, of yeah, that. so that's a, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a question we, I mean, that, that's a down the line. We don't have, we don't yeah, have yeah, the details this, to really this, be able to answer this that. Tonight, Cheryl, is just the additional units in exchange for the block 10. So, so as part of the settlement agreement, we have to also enter in, in, enter into an interim cost and conditional designation agreement with the developer, and then um, by a certain by a day certain, um, uh, so it's, uh, as part of the closing um, or you know, as, as as part of the agreement, um, we would then enter into a redevelopment agreement per the parameters of the plan. So, so that would um, be a time. Yeah, I, I'm trying to move the meeting along. Would that be a time when? when we could speak to the city council and say, oh no, don't vote for this kind of thing. That's what you're talking about right now. Yes. I see Jim Doyle shaking his head. Okay, that's good, thank you. Um, well, just moving along really quickly. Um, there's a, a something being sent to the planning board opposite the train station, um, the Baker building. That, a that's removed, that, that's off the agenda, Cheryl. Oh, okay, well, hey guys, um, I think that was, that was everything. So, oh, one last oh. thing. The party oh, that, that's that's three last thing. things, Cheryl. One last thing. No, those, <laughs> the, the redevelopment, the, the, the resolution to send something to the planning board was actually one of my original three. Um, as far as the parking 
kudos to every, I mean, I'm parking the changing of the road. Kudos to everybody for trying to improve that. The traffic is horrendous. But I will just say, then when we add hundreds and hundreds upon hundreds of units, it's just going to it's going to be just as bad. So that's everything. Thank you for your indulgence. Uh, and for no. the Thank you, Cheryl. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, bye. Yeah, hi. You know what? This is about uh, B351. Is that still on the agenda? So I have, so Council President, I haven't uh, removed it yet. So I think it's fair game for Mr. Uh, Timmick to um, to comment on it. Go ahead, Al. You, sorry, it's Al. I'm mute. Thank you. Go ahead, Al. Sorry. Yeah. So I hope everybody votes for this. Um, you know, it's just kind of you know with all the extra outdoor capacity now, you know, there's really no need to have screens and additional noise outdoors, especially in residential areas. So I hope everybody kind of votes and uh, votes yes for this. And uh, while I'm at it, I, I want to say, uh, Jason, thank you for replying back to my email and uh, look forward to speaking to you on Monday. Thank you, Al. Yep, thank you. We have any more, any other members of the public? That is everyone. Thank you. Motion to close public portion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you Aye. very much. So we have uh, items that are removed tonight. Mr. Lohr, do you want to go through the items that are removed tonight, Mr. Lohr? CD2, T1, and CL3. Okay. And yeah. Council President, while, while the uh, business administrator is speaking to the community if impacted by the quality of life concerns on Bloomfield and First, I'll respectfully pull the ordinance on first reading um, at the bottom of the agenda to um, about the televisions and other projection devices on public streets for now. But I, I should say I'll carry it to the next meeting. I was, I was going to say that you're going to carry that, correct? I'm yeah. And, and please, can we just make sure that the titling of this is correct? It has nothing to do with live music. So, Mr. Lore, uh, can you just remove or... or, or, or um, can, you, can you work with, with Jerry on that? Uh, I will. Councilman? I'll Jerry, I'll send you the I'll send you the titling to, to include yeah. on the next agenda. S send them the language you'd like to see. Thank you, Council President. No, thank you. Can, Council President, can I ask yeah. for clarification? Sure. Uh, Council, Councilman DeFosco, um is yeah. are you talking about B three fifty one now? Um I because you said first reading and I'm not I'm oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I apologize, Jim. It's it's for second reading. Okay. Yeah. Again, I, I was gonna. I, I will send you an email. I, I, I'm I'm in favor of it, but I, I was gonna suggest. I think a non-substantive, uh, just clarification, which I'll send to you, and maybe we'll get that. Yeah, you, know, you can consider it. Okay. Fantastic. All all, all, all thoughts welcome. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, members of the council, any items like to remove for discussion? Off of consent agenda. Uh, Want to do the ordinances? Are we doing oh, yeah, do the ordinances? Yes, I'll do the ordinances. I'm sorry. I apologize. All right. So the next ordinance would be uh, B354, an ordinance amending Southwest Redevelopment Plan pursuant to the settlement agreement between the City of Hoboken, Jefferson Street Partners 2 LLC, regarding city purchase of Block 10. Lots one through seven, and uh, and thirty, and through thirty six. Motion to close the hearing. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any members of the council? Council President. Yes, Councilman Doyle. Uh, I just want when I report out the planning board uh, reviewed this and found it to be consistent with my plan and actually felt that the reduction in the size of the units was actually more consistent with the master plan than as uh, you know the prior version that that it, as it currently stands so thank you council i appreciate that uh call a vote mr cohen aye fusco yes mr doyle aye mrs falco yes Ms. fisher yes 
Giantino. This is Jabor. Yes. Mr. Russo. Aye. President Ramos. Aye. A hearing on an ordinance authorizing the rehabilitation and or replacement of various water mains and completion of various water infrastructure improvements in and for the city of Hoboken County of Hudson, New Jersey, appropriating the sum of 3500000 therefore authorizing the issuance of general obligation bond or bond anticipation notes of the city of Hoboken County of Hudson, New Jersey, an aggregate principal amount of up to three million five hundred thousand, making certain determinations and covenants and authorizing certain related action in connection with the foregoing. Motion to close the hearing. Motion. Motion. All Second. in favor? Aye. Aye. Members of the council? Call the vote. Mr. Cohen? Aye. Fusco? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Ms. Falco? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Jabor? Yes. Mr. Russo? Aye. President Ramos? Aye. The hearing on an ordinance amending Chapter 133-4 exemptions, noise ordinance amending exemptions for municipal operations. Motion to close the hearing? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Councilman Fisher, you have a question? Yeah, I do have a question. I just just want to be clear. I read through it and I wasn't clear. Does this mean that municipal activities can happen just blindly at three o'clock in the morning, like jackhammers at three o'clock in the morning? Is is Director Gonzalez here? I yes, I am yeah. here. Um and it, no, the intent of it is simply to allow us to do like landscaping, um, you know, before parks get busy that we've been having a huge problem, especially after COVID parks are being utilized more than ever. And if we don't get in there early, it becomes actually a really big safety concern to try to be doing active, you know, mowing and, and leaf blowing operations and things like that. Um, if we don't do it really early in the morning, traditionally, we have always done it really early in the morning, but was never allowed by code. Um, so we were trying to- But you do that. it, so I'm clear, you're gonna, you, what, what's really early in the morning? Like 7 a.m. And when was the last time you did mow at 7 a.m.? We've always done it, but now it became an issue. Last week. Yeah. Oh. Um, I'm trying to just resolve the, the discrepancy between our operations and the code. I just, um, the, the one question, it, what made me think about this is all of the, um, the test pits that are being done on the North end, just whatever, just really loud, like jackhammering. And my question is, does a project like that get that caught up in this exemption mm -hmm. and now you actually don't have to come back to the council to do like no. late night activities? No, because Doesn't that's not operations and maintenance. What we're, okay. what we're talking this, about this, is operations and maintenance. This is strictly municipal stuff. operations, not okay. outside contractor operations. They would have to come specifically for us to, okay. to on a specific project. I just, to I just want to make it. sure. I, I, yeah, this is not I knew construction. It was broad I'm just thinking about the extreme. Okay. I, I, yeah, I, I totally understand your concern. That is, that is not the, the intent of this ordinance. It is for operations, not for construction. Okay. Council President. From the Fusco. Uh, there's if there's one director I trust on this, it's Director Gonzalez, and I want to give her the tools necessary. My my only concern is not is not Director Gonzalez. It's it's a future public you know is a p future environmental services director that might take this broadly and you know and and use it to do some of the things that. Councilman T uh, Fisher said, uh, you know, like it reads municipal services, including but not limited to waste collection, snow removal, park maintenance and similar activities conducted by or on behalf of the city of Hoboken environmental services. So that actually could, you know, include the jackhammering as as Councilman Fisher said. And I yet yeah, I see one of my colleagues shaking her head, but yeah. it, it, it could. Right. So why don't we just make it a little bit more specific to park Except operations construction? She was very clear. But yeah, but yeah, I don't see what about park operations that would require jackhammering. I'm, I'm just if there was a if there was a a, a need to fix something under the pavement in a park that you would want to get done before park, you know, you know, the parks got busy, 
you know, and you could do that without the city council's approval and not you, but again, it's, this is, this is law, right? This is, this is for all future councils, administrations and directors. So why wouldn't we just make it in regards to, you know, the specific activities that you want to do and, and, and take it from there? Well, I mean, I think park maintenance okay, I do is have, um... very specific. We could also put in something in there that says accept construction or something, if that would make you more comfortable. I think so. Yeah. Like except major construction, you know, major construction, construction projects. Yeah. Yeah. I, is I'd there, can I ask a, if you, okay, sure. it, yeah, just another kind of related question because this came up recently and I went online to see, I actually wasn't aware that you had a page online talking about why is trash removal done, you know, between the hours of 11 PM and 5 AM, which I thought was great. But do we have like, when you send out the RFP for our trash removal, do you have like a noise like noise level requirements that like they can't exceed um, in it or, or do so we it's, just- It's not noise level requirements that they can't exceed. Um, there is a, a required component of all contracted waste um, hauling machines called a, a packet idle function, meaning that um, <laughs> the technical term, I guess, is that they're not making that noise while they're idling. Um, so that's, it's, there, there are features in the equipment that we require but it's not a specific decibel level or something like that, if that's what you're referencing. Um, but it's specific equipment that we require. Um, and we also do and have worked very hard with CalI to try to make sure that they're not um, backing up unnecessarily, for example, which causes yeah. legally mandated federal backup beeps. Yep. Well, thank you very much. All, yeah, all I would say is like, just for record building purposes. Like if for some reason this does become an issue, like suddenly people are like, what do you mean you're mowing a lawn at six o'clock in the morning that I hope the council would be willing to, in whatever ward or whatever neighborhood, whoever would be willing to revisit this as and when. I think the public will let us know for sure. Instead of waking up at 6.30 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> so, Council President, just so the record's clear, um, I believe we can make that amendment. I don't find it to be substantive. It's more clerical because it's explaining what the ordinance was meant to say anyway. So we're just going to add language that says excluding construction type activities like jackhammering and whatever other descriptors. Pouring we concrete. And all good stuff. Yeah, pouring concrete, things of that nature. So we'll add Thank that you. exclusion, but it's not really changing the ordinance at all because that was not the intent to have those things happen. So we can go forward with second reading and figure out that language. Awesome. Thank you. Call the vote. Thank you. Mr. Cohen. Aye. Bushko. Yes. Mr. Doyle. Aye. Mr. Falco. Yes. Mr. Fisher. Yes. Cantino. Mrs. Jabor. Yes. Mr. Russo. Aye. President Ramos. Aye. A hearing on an ordinance amending chapter 190 entitled Vehicles and Traffic to implement traffic circulation changes on Patterson Avenue. Uh, motion to close the hearing. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 the council, did we just have discussion on this? Uh, call the vote. Mr. Cohen? Aye. Mr. Fusco? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Mr. Falco? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Jabor? Yes. Mr. Russo? Aye. President Ramos? Aye. Hearing on an ordinance amending what? Oh, that was Dutch carry to uh, yeah. Second. Uh, right. Council President, if I may, just quickly. Um, yeah. So this, uh, I just just for the public and and for the um, the school in particular, um, we're hearing this, but we are going to have actually a public safety meeting to talk specifically about um, maybe a better solution for this location. Um, I spoke with Councilman. Uh, Jabor about this, and uh, feel free to correct me, but I think you're in agreement with that as well, Councilman Jabor. Yep. Um, we spoke with the county and putting a school loading zone directly on this specific block of Willow, on this side of Willow, um, I think people will feel uh, actually maybe more dangerous than anything. Um, but we're going to try and figure out a different solution on this block. So we're carrying it, but we'll probably amend it, but carrying it just as a reminder that we're still trying to come up with a solution. And just to add, Councilman Fisher, I know um, an additional concern is the location of the Hertz uh, business that's right there. Um, and if you've observed, I know I have, they've had an increasing amount of um, yeah. 
think rental activities and they are often already backing up that yes. way that's on that same block. So I think we have some dynamics to work out yes. there in terms of um, the other businesses that are yes. directly adjacent. And, and because you. of our recent legislation, uh, Councilman Cohen, definitely, um, you know, it's your award. So this, this was something that just kind of evolved. Um, it, it was introduced to the administration directly to HBU. And when I saw it on the agenda last time, I, was, I, I actually voted on first reading because I just thought this, I don't know, I was very concerned, but without going and doing the work. So I did. I actually spoke to Councilman Jabor because I thought she was the original sponsor, but it wasn't. It was um, came through Director Sharp and I spoke with the county. And so there's just, there's been a number of conversations, but maybe the three of us can figure out a good solution for that. Thanks, Councilwoman. I, I was actually going to mention it's in the fifth ward, yeah. and I'd like to be part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this, thank you, guys. You, you guys can talk about it off, off, offline now. Yeah, we're we'll pulling okay. latte. <laughs> thank you, guys. Okay. I'd, I'd carry it. I'd carry it. Just it's carried. I'm sorry. It's carried. I apologize. <laughs> thank you. Hearing on, a, <laughs> hearing on an ordinance to amend Chapter 58-24, Fear A Concessions. Motion to close. <laughs> Thank Second. you. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Councilor Aye. Count? Council the Council 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 can, can I just ask, that, uh, I've just asked Corporation Council, I, I'm sure it's not substantive, but the title says it's a first reading, which obviously was not intended <laughs> since now we're at a second reading. Yeah. And if you could just tick that off so it won't permanently have that erroneous title, would that be? Yep, that's I think a it's probably probably recently, so we, we can take that off. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman DeFosco? Thank you, Council President. Um, so I'm really happy to see this move forward. Um, it must have been about two years ago where we took uh, a very outdated ordinance and modernized it to make it easy for small businesses in Hoboken that are locally owned, um, minority owned, uh, hiring local, uh, you know, talent and, and uh, labor uh, to activate some of our, you know, our kiosks on PRA. Um, so I'm really excited to see this happen. It's, it's, it's what, what happens when good legislation and the administration uh, work together. Um, and this, this, this particular change is de minimis. It, it, it grows the use of the, of the kiosk to include, include recreational rentals. Um, I, I just wanted to get a, a quick update from Director Freeman uh, in regards to the other kiosks, right? Um, they're, they're blighted. Um, homeless folks, you know, do all sorts of things on them. Um, they're not in the best shape. Um, and I know about a year and a half ago, we had begun discussion on, you know, moving uh, whatever we're storing, the city is storing in those, in those structures out to other locations. So that way we could do exactly this. And what better time to, you know, to activate these spaces than when people want to be outside, when people want to work remotely from a park. Um, so just hoping to get an update on, you know, we got one kiosk going. What's the next steps, Director, for, for the rest of them? But actually defer to Director Gonzalez. She's been managing that that piece of it and she can probably have better insight than I do. Okay, great. Yep, I can speak to that. Um, so to clarify, so the, the concessions are for two of the kiosks, the two vacant kiosks. Um, they also allow per the ordinance for certain other um, areas of, of basically mobile vending um, on, on PRA. So that is what was approved by the council at the last meeting. Um, the two remaining kiosks that are there, one is a restroom and uh, one is a utility room that is not simply storage, it's actually all of the mechanical and electrical for the entire pier. So we cannot relocate that. Um, that, you know, it, it's a, it would be one thing to relocate just the items that we're storing, but the vast majority of that kiosk is taken up by, by MEP systems and we really can't relocate those. And in fact, actually, we really should be relocating the underground, um, electrical for the puree fountain to that kiosk. Uh, we've been we've been having discussions about how that needs to be elevated above um, flood elevation. So um, that specific kiosk, I don't think is a feasible option. Um, if there was an interest in removing the restroom and turning that kiosk into a vending kiosk, we could certainly have that discussion. We do not currently use that restroom for various reasons. Um, the terminal is very close and that's where most people actually go to the restroom from PRA. Yeah, um, I think that I think that would be beneficial, Director. You know, there's there there's 
private industry that is looking to make investments on our, you know, on, for these kiosks. Um, there's a developer that I, that has been eager to uh, use a, a portion of their community uh, benefit, um, you know, uh, to, to, to invest in the construction of new kiosks. So, you know, um, we have, we have the federal funds, uh, whose very purpose is to help small businesses and create infrastructure. So I don't think that, you know, we're going to take a hit to our municipal tax base uh, by, you know, you know, by, by having that conversation. So great. I'll set up, I'll set up some time with you. Any of my colleagues on the council that would like to join uh, more than welcome to, but let's, let's make that happen. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Council president. Yeah. Council Cohn. I don't see your hand up. Sorry. I apologize. No worries. Uh, thanks council president. Uh, you know, we had that incredible event at Pure A just, I guess, I think it was just a week and a half ago for Rebuild by Design with Governor Murphy, uh, Secretary Fudge from HUD and uh, Senator Booker. And uh, while we were there, I actually ran into L.V. Guzman, who is uh, one of the people who's looking to develop these kiosks. And we talked about this and I think that it does unlock some good opportunities for people. Uh, it'll create some good things for the community. And uh, Pier A was a site of some historic uh, activity for the city. And I think that this is a good change for the community. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, vote? Mr. Cohen. Hi. Hushko. Yes. Mr. Doyle. Hi. Falco. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Mr. Jabor. Yes. Mr. Russo? Aye. President Ramos? Aye. Hearing on an ordinance amending Chapter 190 entitled Vehicles and Traffic to implement traffic, traffic circulation changes on Marshall Street and 2nd Street. Motion to call the hearing? Motion. Motion. Second. Motion. All, all Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 Members of the council, we are in discussion. Uh, call the vote, Mr. Clark. Mr. Cohen? Aye. Fusco? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Mr. Falco? Yes. Mr. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Jabor? Yes. Mr. Russo? Aye. President Ramos? Aye. Hearing on an ordinance authorizing the city of Hoboken to acquire certain real property currently de designated on the tax map of the city of Hoboken as Block 264.2, Lot 1 at yet to be subdivided portions of 264.1 lot one monarch properties and block 87 lot 1.01 800 822 monroe and convey certain real property currently designated as block one lot one municipal garage site and enter into a three-year lease to continue the use of municipal garage site in the interim period if the conveyance. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 To the council. Call the vote. Mr. Cohen. Aye. Mr. Fusco. Yes. Mr. Doyle. Aye. Mr. Falco. Yes. Mr. Fisher. Yes. Mr. Jabor. Yes. Mr. Russo. Aye. <laughs> President Ramos. Aye. An ordinance for hearing amending redevelopment plan for the <coughs> public works garage site. Motion to close. Motion to close. There you go, Council. Sure. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Council President? Yes, Council DePasco. Um, so I just wanted to speak on this. Obviously, um, I had made an impassioned plea to my uh, colleagues on this council regarding my representation of the neighborhoods surrounding the DPW garage. Um, you know, they had asked for a very simple um, update to this plan, uh, which was removing one story off of the park and below sides, moving it over to the observer sides. Um, now that we have approved the uh, the deal for, for the Monarch, um, you know, I'll again make that, that plea to everybody on this council. Um, you know, one's home, one's real estate property is the, the you know, some of the, some of the most important uh, belongings to anyone. And to have to endure a city council that is unwilling to listen to their feedback um, has, has been tough for me, for, for me to watch. Um, I would again love to, you know, 
I would again love to reintroduce the 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 the, the opportunity to simply move one story off of, of the, the residential streets over to Observer. What it does, it also sets a standard for development in the future for this neighborhood. We're saying we we want basically we're okay with what's tantamount to 10 stories, nine, nine stories above base flood elevation in a neighborhood that currently has, you know, four and five story buildings. You know, the, the ward, my neighbors want, you know, want this development to happen. We want to make sure that it's done in a sensible architectural styling. We want the rateables. We want the ground floor uh, amenity space. We want the garage moved out. And I think that the ask is pretty simple. Let's just move it down. So, you know, I, you know, I, I, I'm open to suggestions in terms of whether we can do that tonight. Um, and if a vote is called, you know, um, my no vote would, would not be indicative of me being against the overall project. It's indicative of the fact that this simple ask by my neighborhood has gone unanswered. Well, Council President, I, if if I may, I think we lost Ruben. <laughs> we're we're a ship without a rudder. <laughs> I don't know what we do now. And we have no vice president. Usually, when I talk for more than thirty seconds, Ruben, it's Jimmy he, reverts to Jimmy, the senior member of the Jimmy. city council. <laughs> oh, you don't Michael want me Russo. in charge. <laughs> All right, Russo, Acting Chairman Russo. Go ahead, Jim. Thank you, Council Council Acting President. Um, no, I just I think Councilman DeFosco. I mean, I hear you, and I, I'm not unsympathetic. I, I what I would say, if you were just saying, let's take a floor off, I would say I, I, I probably would agree with you. But when you're taking you know a floor off and you're adding two to the other, I would say the precedent that you're creating on Observer Highway at 16 plus two stories is a worse precedent than the precedent that you're alluding to. So it's not a simple, you know, the, the simple, please make this Jim, more you, you acceptable know, to, to the neighborhood. I, listen, your, your, your conciliatory tone is appreciated. I do, like, I really do appreciate it, but you know, as well as I do on the Southern Development Subcommittee that we're looking at buildings uh, as part of the Elcor redevelopment site that are 200 to 300 feet tall. So those will by far dwarf, you know, the, 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 the height of this building on Observer, you know, even if we move the, the one or two stories over to Observer Highway. So it's like, let's be honest here. Like we're, I, you I, know, well, I will be honest. Well, uh, count, council wait. members, again, well, we, we understand both your points. Any other council members have anything to add? Uh, acting council uh, president. Uh, I mean, I, I, seriously, because I, I, it'll go back and forth. We know that. Like I, everybody understands well, where they stand. All, right. all, all I would just like to say, hey, is Councilman it, Cohen. I'm sorry, Councilman Doyle. Just very briefly, I, I think the I think I asked Mr. Marazzini this question at the meeting two weeks ago, and asked him, is it possible within this envelope to reduce one story uh, with respect to that block? And the answer was that it may. It depends upon leverage as things go forward. So this is an envelope within which we are approving. It could be reduced. And the way things change in a negotiation over years, and this it will be years before this is constructed, we know that, things could change. Uh, but what we are doing here is we're locking in, uh, you talk about value of real estate, think about the apartments in the T building that are not gonna have to look at uh, a, a view, their views of New York City are not gonna be erased by 11 story condominium towers are gonna to be in front of them. That has nothing to do with this plan. We already have the council settlement. Councilman, let him finish, please. Well, this, this, this is all, this is a Rubik's cube. <laughs> this is all interconnected. You cannot have one piece without affecting the other. So to approve this plan absolutely impacts the T building and every other part. It affects the DPW. You said Councilman DeFusco, you're in favor of moving the garage out of your neighborhood into the fifth ward. That's great. That's good for the first word. That can't happen unless we approve this deal because we are on a short timeline with Iron State's requirements with respect to its its needs. And they're on the other side of the table. So, great. So I have a suggestion. Count, Councilman, let, I'm going to let you close the debate. Anyone else have anything else to add? Thank you, Acting Council President. Yeah, Ruben, all yours, brother. You guys missed me? Sorry. I, I don't know. 
I don't know how you deal with these guys. Let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just call me Ringling Brothers <laughs> or, or PT. <laughs> I'm sorry. Where are we? <laughs> I, um, I don't think there's any other council members that had anything else to add, but I uh, told Councilman DeFusco he could close the debate before we call the vote. That's, that's the third time for him. Yeah, well, thank you. It's my ward and I'm representative of the subcommittee that I chair as well. So I, I appreciate the time, Councilman, Councilmen. Um, listen, I, you know, I, I don't think the sky is falling. Uh, dynamic really has, you know, you know, caught, you know, caught most of the public's, you know, imagination. I think everybody sees this administration as trying to rush into a, a deal to close uh, what was a failed million dollar legal argument uh, that was taken on by Ravi and his predecessor, Dawn, whom many of you supported, uh, and to close it out in advance of a mayoral election um, at the expense of my community and my neighborhood. I am uh, d disappointed is, is the least of is, is the best word I could say here when we're floating around 200 to 300 uh, uh, foot tall buildings at Elcor and we can't consider sizing down the neighborhood streets that directly impact my neighborhood. And the people that should be most aware of this feedback are not the ward councilmen. I can understand where, where, where Councilman Cohen or Fisher would, would, would want to see these things happen, but it's Jim Doyle, Emily Jabour, and, um, and Vanessa Falco, the three at-large people that represent the first ward. And their voices and their votes on this are exceptionally important in regards to this plan. So I, I'll say this is, if you guys want to move this forward tonight, I'm a, I'm a no vote, but I I will I will be I, I'll be reintroducing a plan amendment, you know, so we can we could we could take take off the table uh, the fact that this is that this is going to prohibit, uh, you know, it, that this is going to you know slow down the momentum of saving our water from because it's not that's just a false a false narrative being perpetuated to, you know, to move this forward by certain councilmen and the and the mayor. Um, and I'll just reintroduce the plan, you know, next next meeting with a story off of, you know, Willow and Park. And then we could actually have the conversation about what good development means. And the only thing the, 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 the developer wants here is to get the unit count. They don't care where the units are. They don't care if the units are in Park and Willow or Observer. The only person that cares about it is Mayor Bala. I don't know why. I don't know why he's so, so, so interested in forcing this height into the residential neighborhoods. It's, it's weird, it's bizarre, but that's the administration that we, we get to deal with. Um, the vote of, of this councilman and representation of his neighborhood is going to be no, and I, and I would hope that the council at large um, members would support that as well. Thank you, Council President. Mr. Clerk, call the vote. I have to. Yeah. No, listen, I, I missed most of the debate, so go for it. <laughs> Mr. Cohen? Aye. The Fusco? No. Well, hey, Mrs. Falco. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Mrs. Jabor. Yes. Mr. Russo. Aye. President Ramos. Aye. I apologize that my Wi-Fi uh, conked out on me. So hey. We've been, we've all been there. A hearing on an ordinance of the city of Hoboken County of Hutchinson, New Jersey, amending reinstating financial agreement with MBS Housing Urban Renewal. LS C. Motion to close. Motion to close the hearing. Yep. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Members of the council? Aye. Councilman Fisher, your hand up? No. Nope. That was just my aye. Okay. A call vote. Mr. Cohen? Aye. Mr. Fusco? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Mr. Falco? Yes. Mr. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Jabor? Yes. Mr. Russo? Aye. President Ramos. Aye. Petitions and communications, proclamation from Mayor Bala, thanking Hoboken Library Director Lena Pavlis for her years of service. Communication, a proclamation from City Council proclaiming May 22nd as Anthony Magnoli Day in the city of Hoboken. Mr. Clerk, may I just uh, speak on that for one second? Yes. Can I tell you, Mr. Clerk? Uh, sure. This, this proclamation, uh, unfortunately, back in, I can't remember the year now, right now, uh, but Anthony Magnoli 
was honored, given a proclamation along with Nicholas Walker uh, for receiving their Eagle Scout uh, commendation by the city council in, I believe, 2006, around that time, 2006 to 2004, around that time period, he received this Eagle Scout commission along with Nicholas Walker. And the city council at the time marked May 19th as Anthony Mignoli and Nicholas Walker Day in honor of their service and their awesome recognition to achieve Eagle Scout status. But unfortunately, earlier this year, Anthony Mignoli uh, passed away, uh, tragically. Uh, passed away, uh, much, way too young. So this is just a reaffirmation uh, for, of uh, Mr. Magnoli's uh, recognition uh, from his Eagle Scout service and his wife's service, uh, just uh, re-honoring him uh, and his family. And actually, Nicholas Walker's request, who reached out for me, uh, the Eagle Scout that he did, the Eagle Scout. They were still close friends uh, to this day. Uh, and he was uh, very sorry to lose his friend. And so we just want to re-commemorate uh, Anthony and Nicholas on their, uh, on Anthony and his life service and, uh, and the loss to, of his family that I know. And see, I know Councilman Russo knows his family as well. Yep. And our thoughts and prayers are with the family. And uh, this is uh, re-honoring uh, Anthony uh, and his life. Thank you, members of the council. Mr. Clark? Re report from municipal tax collector Sharon Curran for taxes collected for the month of April 2021, $34,794,419.91. Report from the municipal court indicating receipts collected for the month of April 2021, $234,589.84. Claims total for this agenda, $3,122,000. $283.13. Hello, vote. I think I have, let's see, did I leave? Wait a minute now. All right, and then we got to go back to uh, miscellaneous life. Correct. Call vote on claims. Any questions on claims? Call vote. Mr. Cohen? Aye. The Fosco? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Falco? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Giantino? Mrs. Jabor? Yes. Mr. Russo? Aye. President Ramos? Aye. Now we go back to miscellaneous licenses. Mr. Cohen? Aye. Mr. Fusco? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Falco? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Mrs. Yes. Jab Mrs. Jabor? Yes. Mr. Russo? Aye. President Ramos? Aye. Uh, we did. We are on payroll. Okay. On the payrolls, a report for 5 5 2021, payroll $1,781,698.42. Overtime, oh, other pay, I'm sorry, $91,270.39. Other pay, $204,898.49. Question on the payroll? Call the vote. Mr. Cohen? Aye. Mr. Fusco? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Falco? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Jabor? Yes. Mr. Yes. Russo? Aye. President Ramos. Aye. Council President? Yes, Council Russo. If you would indulge me for a second, uh, sure. a couple of council members uh, reached out to me about the five ordinances at the end of the meeting. Uh, the, uh, the council for the uh, Cannabis Review Board actually jumped on the call. He's now in the uh, attendees room. Uh, if you'd like, he could quickly explain why the need for getting those five ordinances on tonight so that we can move through the timeline so we don't lose the opportunity with the state. Um, but I, I leave that to you and the rest of the council. Uh, he can't stay on until the end of the meeting. So if, if you like, he could speak to it now uh, before the public speaks uh, for the, the public portion, or if, um, if you want, I could go over it later. Agenda first, and then we'll go uh, to him. Is that okay? Say it again. 
we'll go over go through consent agenda sure and then we'll go to is that, is that okay that's All great right, by you. me thank, thank you. you okay uh items to be removed from the agenda we have cl3 cd2 and t1 not on the agenda at all tonight. Right. CL2 is, is removed, is carried. Yeah. CL2 is carried as well. So yeah, those items off the agenda all to no, no vote, no action on those items tonight at all. Members of the council, removing any items from the agenda, the like consent agenda. E3. Excuse me? E3. E3? Yes. E gotcha. A any? Any other members of the council? A5, Council President. A5. <laughs> Any other items? Okay, let's call a vote on consent agenda, moving E3 and A5. Mr. Clark? Mr. Cohen? Aye. Mr. Fusco? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Falco? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Jabor? Yes. Mr. Russo? Staying on eight three, yes on the rest. President Ramos. Aye. Okay. A five. A five comes from the Fusco. Thank Council. you, Council. Thank you, Council. Council President. Did you want to do that um, with Ron? Just, just, real quick, A five. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, that's we'll, fine. Just, just, just get, we get through this. Understood. Yep. No, I appreciate it. I'll, I'll only talk for 10 minutes about this, Councilman Rousseau. I'm not in charge that's, anymore. That's Mike. nine minutes and, nine, and 59 seconds too long, Councilman. Um, <laughs> listen, this this uh, resolution is approving a $60,000 plus dollar contract for an insurance provider, which I have religiously and frequently talked about as, um, as being the worst deal for Hoboken. Um, at the end of the day, uh, when our taxes uh, were not stable because of an, inf an influx of government, federal government funding, uh, the administration always pointed to uh, health insurance um, and the rising premiums associated with it. Um, we went out to RFP three years ago, four years ago, some, some, some number of years ago, and this insurance provider still wasn't the best deal for the city. So the administration continues to go back to this insurance provider uh, for whatever political reasons, and I, I, I can't, I, I'm not, I'm not hopeful that this council is going to vote it down because of fear of retribution from this particular provider um, who owns media outlets, um, as well as uh, has donated frequently uh, through uh, bundlers to the mayor and his council slate. Um, but I would be remiss not to call out that this agency is not only a bad deal for Hoboken, but it also points to everything that's wrong with politics. So in the future, when you see rising insurance premiums and rates and, you know, the administration says it's beyond their control, this vote is, is indica indicative as every vote before it, that it is within our control. And um, I would, would urge my colleagues to vote no to it. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Any other members of the council? Call vote. Yeah, just, no, oh, wait, sorry. Wait, Council Fisher, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, just a quick question. I thought Fairview actually sold What's to a... Florida-based insurance company. So are they even Fairview anymore? They still do function as Fairview um, in New Jersey, so. And they have all the rights to enter into the insurance. There's nothing with the parent company that's Florida-based that is required? No, we when we, um, when we went out to RFP um, again earlier this year, all of their pay to play, they gave both um, all their Fairview related uh, information and also all the parent related information as well. Parent I, just, just for clarity, I wasn't necessarily asking about pay to play. I was more, yeah, I was just more wondering who the actual counterparty is that the city transacts with because they sold the business to a parent company. Everyone, um, that, everyone that we interact with on the self-insurance fund operates under the uh, heading of Fairview insurance. Okay. And the other RFPs, um, that's fine. That was, that was my only question. Thanks. Thank you. I, I just, I want to just comment just so you, you're aware. This is a six month contract. So the, the flat fee on a lot of these insurance brokers are $10,000 a month. Um, so we're, we're doing, um, and I know, I think I had a conversation with Councilman Fisher, Councilman DeFusco and I have talked a little bit about this, about the um, desire to explore going to the state health benefits plan. And part of that is what we've been doing the last several months, but we do need to, 
Um, Fairview has been operating as our insurance broker this year. Um, actually, our, our Chapter 78 contributions have went down 3% this year. So, um, you know, it's been one of those things where, you know, it's not necessarily That's every it. single year. So um, I would say we, we've established a really good working relationship with them. They've done a really great job this year. The la last year as well, kind of working us through COVID and how to evaluate all the, the difficulties there. So um, that's just, just some background on that. Thank you. Thank you. Call vote. Mr. Cohen? Aye. Mr. Fushko? No. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Falco? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Jabor? Yes. Mr. Russo? Aye. President Ramos? Aye. E3. Uh, E3, Councilman Doyle. Yes, thank you, Council President. Very quickly, um, uh, Director Gonzalez, uh, I just had a question. I apologize, I meant to email you. Um, why do we need an LSRRP for a, a road? I, I, I thought it was generally after environmental remediation occurred or was occurring. Uh, in a, is 13th Street uh, subject to some kind of environmental remediation? Yeah, so um, so this is a, a complicated um, LSRP situation. So we have an LSRP for the Northwest Resiliency Park as well as for the North Lot. Um, North Hudson Sewerage Authority is doing the work in 13th Street as part of their H6, H7 phase one project. And um, technically the city is the owner of that soil. Um, there in our purchase and sale agreement with BASF, there was, um, you know, a provision that once BASF remediated the street to a certain standard, that any future remediation was the responsibility of the city. In fact, the city is not doing remediation and HSA is removing the soil, but the city is considered the generator of the soil because we own the road and the property. So after talking to okay. several, uh, Attorneys and LSRPs, we determined we need to retain one for the documentation purposes of okay. the project. Um, and good also, enough. frankly, to QAQC and HSA's work. He said, okay, director, he's good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Call vote. On E3, Mr. Cohen? Aye. Mr. Fushko? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Mr. Falco? Yes. <laughs> Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Jabor? Yes. Mr. Russo? Aye. President Ramos? Aye. Yeah. Councilman Russo, do we have, uh, I think that's. Yes, if we could let Mondello in, into the uh, meeting, he can most certainly go through it quickly. Mr. Mondello, welcome. Welcome. Uh, yeah, this is that, thanks for hearing me this, uh, this evening. I had no idea I was going to be speaking. So as a 60-year-old deadhead, uh, although I have a Pink Floyd shirt on, uh, this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, also, as, as a councilman in Kin former councilman in Kinelon and also in Fairlawn, I'm doing this in three minutes. I can't believe the agenda that you guys have. It's amazing. Hats off. Well, you, you're taking your three minutes now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to hear. <laughs> All right, so everybody has heard, what is this August 21st, 2021 deadline? Well, essentially, if you don't take any type of action whatsoever with respect to cannabis, well, then the state, the CRC, the Cannabis Regulatory Commission, uh, essentially comes in and they're going to uh, permit every single class, and there's six classes. It goes from cultivator, to a delivery service will be permitted. Um, the retail will be permitted in the uh, your, your uh, retail zone, and then the rest will be permitted in the industrial zone. So what makes sense? Uh, prohibit those things that you think you may not want. Um, there's six classes. Presumably, you want to get rid of five of them. You can, from my understanding and the League of Municipalities' understanding, you can always opt in at another date. So if you prohibit those five, I'm guessing you want to keep retail because certainly your medicinal dispensaries, they're going to be applying at some point in time. That's it in a nutshell. Questions? You, you Not, can't I, prohibit though the delivery. That's one of the okay. six. There's a difference between a delivery service being placed in your town where I have six 
uh, vehicles that get to drive around versus I'm coming from Kinelon and I'm delivering mar- Well, you're not supposed to call it marijuana. That's the illegal stuff. I'm delivering cannabis to Hoboken. That is under the state's control completely. They're going to regulate how it's done and the hours. And if they say it's 24-7, it's 24-7. Thank you. Council President? Councilman Cohen? Uh, Ron, question for you. Uh, I I saw the note that you had that was appended to these five ordinances. I don't know if you intended to include it or not, but uh, the note suggested that it was, these were, you know, really more intended to start the discussion than they were considered to be like refined ordinances. Uh, We've kind of started the discussion tonight. Does it make sense to refine the ordinances and and vote on them in two weeks rather than to move on them tonight on first reading? So Councilman Cohen, you know better than I do because I've been out of the council role for a while. This stuff has to be enacted by by August 21st. If you tell me that timeline is doable, that's up to you guys. That timeline yeah, is doable. If if I could if I could jump in too, I I think what uh, what we discussed anyway was uh, kind of getting the uh, the meat of all of it in those um, in those five ordinances, and 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 they're all different, right? Some has to do with taxation, some has to do with city code as far as uh, land use, some has to do with the cannabis board itself, right? So we what we did was we went through all of it. I th- I think where there's a little bit of room for having discussion is do we regulate how many licenses we're going to have in in the city, right? And that's going to be up to us. Um, so I, what I'd like to do is get a first reading done tonight so that it's on the books. If in fact it does get delayed in any way, we have a leg to stand on with the state to say, look, we started this process well before the twenty first. Um, you know, we just had to refine something. Uh, so I think we have a better uh, standing at that point. Uh, and again, I think the way Ron put most of the legislation together uh, really covers our bases as to what, um, what the uh, intent for the council, the administration uh, really wants to be in the city of Hoboken from listening to past meetings, having conversations, um, I think there's just a couple unanswered questions that I think we as a council should really debate at our next meeting in a second hearing. Uh, and if in fact there are certain things that need to change, we have the ability to change them then, bring it back for a first reading the same night and then vote on a second reading the following meeting. So again, my concern is just the timeline here. I think most of the ordinances are, are completed. I think there's a couple of things that we as a council may want to change. Um, but if we don't, great. We're ahead of the curve and we just vote, voted on, in on second reading at the next meeting. Uh, council President, if I, could, if I may. Yes, Council Cohen, absolutely. Uh, I, I obviously respect the Councilman Russo's views on this. I just want to point out, we got, we got five ordinances emailed to us at about 10 minutes of five. I understand, sure. And, you know, the only thing the only thing I was able to read was Ron's transmittal letter, which was like, this ain't great, but it's, it'll start the process. So, I mean, my hesitancy is coming from the fact that one, I have not read any one of these five ordinances. Two, it was not possible to read any of these five ordinances. And three, if the key date is August in August, as, as Ron has suggests, I don't think having two weeks to take a look at these things is going to, is going to uh, hurt us. But, but if I'm wrong about that, Ron, let me know, because I do not want to jeopardize the issues that Councilman Russo is raising. I think they're legitimate. If I may, Council President, in less than yes, Ron. Seconds, yep. The question uh, is to you. Uh, uh, Phil, if nothing else, the prohibition ordinance is really just pro forma. Um, I'm, I'm guessing out of the six, you guys want to prohibit five. I'm not sure you want cultivation. I don't think you want distribution. I don't think you want wholesale storage, but if you do, you can do it later on. So I set it up where you can simply cross out retail and at a minimum, I think that one should fly. It's an but, but I think the, the, the Councilman Cohen's point, he doesn't even know the five that are in there. Well, what, what's, what's in those five, right? Councilman Cohen, that's a, that's a so if he, if he would have read it, had time to read it, he would probably be able to, yeah. you know, I don't know. for himself. Yeah. So I, I see what Councilman, what Councilman Cohen's coming from. And, so, and again, Council guys, President, Council sorry, Doyle, Council Russo, mm-hmm. Council Doyle. Well, I, I wanted to just ask the question. You know, Councilman Russo and use uh, is 
if one of these has to go to the planning board uh, and then we get into July and August, there's only one meeting, um, maybe the use one, if we're going to delay one of the five or two of the five, I don't know which, what the five are either. I did the opportunity to look at them, look them over, but um, maybe go with split the I'm baby sure and, and take maybe care of five, six. If Jim doesn't know, none of us know what's on. And guys, I, the only thing I was going to say is, look, I, I don't have a problem not voting on them tonight, right? Like, if, yeah, no, if we're going to delay it, I just want to remind everybody we're going into our summer sessions. Yeah. And it's only one meeting and, a and, month. And, and, and Councilor Bruce, when I spoke earlier uh, today to see if we got on each other, just to have this conversation, get the ball moving, to make everyone aware that a timeline is coming. Councilor Ramos, we have two meetings in July. We do have two meetings in July. But, but I think I, Councilman Doyle is saying uh, we have a uh, planning board meeting. So I'm going to have to go to the planning board as well. Okay. So, and that's out our of concern. The, out of the but, six ordinances, the, the land use one would have to go there. So okay. Right. right. On the, land use and the, the, the planning board is meeting on July, June 1st. So they won't meet again until into July. So, but it's still before August 22nd, but sure. it may be worth at least voting on the use one. Okay, let's, okay. So, and, so, and, so and if we can do that, that, let's vote on the use one tonight. We have a number on that, Councilman Russo. Which one's the use? Yeah, number? Um, I, I don't know what, what order uh, Jerry put them in, but we'll, we'll just uh, we'll call it the use ordinance uh, and then vote on that. And then we'll, uh, we'll wait for our next meeting to uh, go over uh, for first reading with the other ordinances. Uh, okay. And in the meantime, everyone, as you're looking at them, Which by all means, reach out. Give me any suggestions. We'll get them over to Ron, and we'll try to make them as per perfect as possible before uh, our next meeting so we don't have any delays. Yeah, that, that, that is, makes sense, guys. Is, is awesome. Ron an attorney? I, I didn't hear that yes. part. Yes, he's, but, he is, he is the most appropriate attorney for our cannabis review board. <laughs> Notwithstanding his blue uh, Pink Floyd t-shirt, yeah. right? And, and the fact that he's a deadhead. So, yeah. <laughs> See, he's a practicing cannabis attorney. <laughs> Listen, I, and I, I remain available 24-7. If there's any questions, send me an email, call me. Takes a lot of practice. <laughs> awesome. All, All right, right guys, so, we're going to vote, so, we're gonna vote awesome. the use one that needs to go to the planning board tonight, and Listen. the others will be for first reading next council meeting. Awesome. Thank Listen. you, Council President. Thank you, everyone. I got to start smoking, and now I'm getting confused. <laughs> <laughs> which, which number is that? Is it five, six, seven, or eight, or nine, Council Russo? Uh, I believe I will... it is. Jerry, do you remember what order you put it on? We're going to go to the public, we'll go to the public to portion. All right. Now, We'll, yeah, let's, let's go through it and we'll vote on it at the end. And then we'll come back. Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Thank All you. Right. But you have the do you have this do you have the associated resolutions for the planning board too? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, didn't, yes. I just didn't see them. Okay. All right. So we'll go to the public uh, our public portion, Rod. Uh, what do we have? Which one? I'll tell you right now. <laughs> All right. Hi. Hey Hi. Pat, Hi. welcome back. Thank you, uh, Council President Ramos. Um, I once again sit here patiently, and please, none of y'all don't distract me so I won't lose focus, okay? Because when I get emotional, which I try to refrain from doing, excuse me, Jimmy, which I try to refrain from doing, I sometimes don't get my point across clearly. I want to get my point across clearly tonight for the simple fact that this is systemic, what I'm talking about. It's not going to disappear. OK, and it's like almost so disingenuous and deceptive to see you got Emily Jabor, you got Phil Cohen, you got Jen Genetino, Tiffany Fisher and the list goes on. Run around our town, jump in these photo ops and you're doing so much for the community way before you even moved here. Pat Waiters was doing those things, whether you want to recognize it or not, whether you want to try to undermine me, whether you want to try to say blacks don't count in Hoboken, whichever thing you want to choose, you could choose. I felt so did, especially by you, Mr. Cohen, because I gave you a little bit of respect and you did reach back out to me and me and you talked about a conversation. I told you how I felt about that seat, thinking you only was going to come on board and challenge your own colleagues and say, hey, wait a minute, Pat Wade has got a point. We fishing around trying to find every way That's not easy. to let her be a representative instead of telling the true facts what it is. For you to go try to take a legal document and put it on your letterhead, 
okay, saying that you must be a resident. And I said to Mr. Cohen these exact words, uh-oh, they, they, they tried to hurt me, but it actually helped me because I am qualified because I do fall in this category. But just for the people of the public, because they are so upset, the people that's watching this, the ones that's smart enough to know that the process has been neglected and abused for years. And because some of you guys moved here with the systemic racism that's still going on today, that don't exempt you because you adopted it. Now one of y'all tried to change it. Not one of you. So I don't care what you say when I hang up. Like, oh, wait a minute. We got a black. We found a black that we do on a board. OK, the last time I talked about this, when y'all gave uh, um, Kurt Gartner the sewage authority, the minute I hung up. Emily Jabor, you should watch yourself because that's the first thing you said. Isn't there a black on the housing authority? When you try to cover up racism, that's worse. You hurt a person like me even worse by trying to show proof that you're not. Your actions are still showing us clearly different. Well, that move that you made, everybody that live in this town, seeing what you did, but, and then poor Barbara Reyes. Barbara, again, I told you I was going to say this. Don't feel bad. You had nothing to do with it. From from the time Dawn Zimmer became our mayor and moved Rob Davis, the only black person that ever served on that board, it was abundantly clear. From that point on, it was cutting deals. When Vanessa Falco at least tried to reach out to you, Vanessa, you made them let you fall victim too. Because you said, well, Pat, I can't because we don't have the vote. Stop letting them tease y'all and fool y'all about it's the majority. Mayor Bala, you totally lied to my face. You lied over the phone. You lied in text and said, well, wait a minute. It's not me. It's Ruben's pick. It's not Ruben. It's Stop playing place to blame. You see in all around America, it's hard to do, but a lot of colleagues, family members, and everybody else is facing the same racial tension all around the world, and they're trying to correct it, not cover it up. Hoboken have covered it up far too long. The only reason I'm not on the seat, and I'm going to reiterate and say it over and over, because people come to me, and I want to uh, give a huge shout out to you too, Father Centauri. I'll stop by the Father. I am going to people, and I want you guys exposed. You know who you are. Exposure is the key. I hope people is not fooled. This one ain't going nowhere, and I promise you, Chief is very disappointed to see you uh, mysteriously or whatever, all of a sudden you retiring or you leaving, it bothers me because that flyer, okay, I want that to be brought to justice and I want that nigga comment to be brought to justice because if it's not and people not being held accountable, racism is not going to change. And yes, it is in Hoboken alive and well. So tonight again, I'm putting it on a record. I'm keeping times. I'm keeping dates because we're going to see who finally make history. We're going to see who finally make history and adjust what I'm saying and don't try to lie and try to hide and play cover up because I got documentation again and you will be brought to light. You will be brought to light. And I'm wrapping it up with saying this. I'm sorry for getting emotional, but if you live in the black skin that I'm in and the disparities and disrespect that you guys been doing to me for all of these years since you came into this town instead of embracing me and understanding what it is in America today to be black. None of you came to me, but you had the nerve to use me, Mayor Bala, by posting my picture to make people think that I'm with you. I am not, again, I want this on the record and the public to see it and witness, I am not supporting Mayor Bala and never will. Because we don't need a liar or somebody like him without a heart and a conscience to run this city. It's disgusting what you did to me. And then the very next day, post my picture on your page after overlooking me for the seat. Very disrespectful. I have been disrespected, disre disregarded. The incidents that happened with uh, uh, Brian Sharp. And if these are colleagues and you scared to approach them and get what's right done, please step down. Because I'm going to keep fighting until I request that you guys step down. Thank you, Council President Ramos. Please, again, I'm going to tell you I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to continue to investigate until I bring justice from every last one of you. And it's about accountability. You will be held accountable for your actions. You Thank will you. be held accountable. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, you Mr. Ramos. You have a right. wonderful evening. You too, Pat. Thank you so much, Pat. Any other members of the public, Rod? Okay, we have our item for uh, first reading. Uh, that would be- oh, most, of the close, most of the public portion, I'm sorry, most I apologize. Second. All in favor? Aye. 
right. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize. All right. I think it's uh, number eight. But, well, we, we still have the others. We still have four others for first reading, right, Jimmy? Yes, but you want to yeah. do this the ordinance uh, for I, the I don't know. cannabis, or you want to go go, no, go, back? Or, go go in order, go in order. One, All two, right, three, I'm going to go in order. All right, wait. Okay. Let's see. Wait a minute. Where are, you from? Where are my kids? Vanessa, you're on, not on mute. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I hit it. <laughs> and, and find your kids, Vanessa. Yeah, because it's curfew <laughs> right now. It's 10 o'clock. You know you know you know you <laughs> Good man, Jim. Good man. All right, I got it now. Okay. All right, so we got ordinances for introduction. An ordinance for introduction, an ordinance amending the construction code 86-5 to include violation of water discharge certain unsafe conditions and creating discharge of creating unsafe conditions. Mr. Sorry. Cohen? Aye. Mr. Fusco? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Falco? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Jabour. Yes. Mr. Russo. Aye. President Ramos. Aye. Board for introduction, amending Chapter 68 of the Code of the City of Hoboken, entitled Alcoholic Beverages at 68-7, 500 foot rule. Council President, can I, can I just ask a quick question of the sponsor? I know we're not debating yeah. the person. Uh, Council President, is that okay? Seven. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> How many uh, how many licenses are there currently in the second ward? There's there are seventeen currently in the second ward, so this would add three to the current seventeen. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, Hold vote. Mr. Cohen. Aye. Mr. Fusco. Yes. Doyle. Aye. Mrs. Falco? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Jabour? Yes. Mr. Russo? Aye. President Ramos? Aye. Orange for introduction, amending chapter 192, parking for persons with disabilities. Call vote. Mr. Cohen? Aye. Fusco? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Falco? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Jabour. Mrs. Jabour. She's on mute. You're on mute. All right. Okay. Aye. Mr. She's Russo. Sick. Aye. President Ramos. Aye. Ordinance for introduction, amending redevelopment plan for the Northwest Industrial Redevelopment Area. Call vote. Mr. Cohen. Aye. Fusco. Yes. Mr. Doyle. Aye. Falco? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes, I'm first reading. Mrs. Jabour? Yes. Mr. Russo? Aye. President Ramos? Aye. I have a resolution. A resolution of the City of Hoboken referring the amend, amend, amendment of the redevelopment plan for the Northwest Industrial Area to the City of Hoboken Planning Board for review and report pursuant to local redevelopment housing law. Mr. Cohen? Aye. DeFusco? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Falco? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Jabour? Yes. Mr. Russo? Aye. President Ramos? Aye. Now on... Now on eight. On uh, new business. Correct. Yeah, we're going E7. Sorry. All right. That, that, when, so we just okay. E E7. This is the director of the yeah, e request. E7. Resolution mm -hmm. granting 
the North Hudson Sewage Authority permission for temporary overnight road closure, 13th Street from Madison Street to Adams Street for construction of H2, H7 combined sewage overflow long-term control plan. Call, call vote. Mr. Cohen? Aye. Fusco? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Mr. Falco? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Jabor? Yes. Mr. Russo? Aye. President Ramos? Aye. Ordinance. Now on, now oh, on yes. the zoning? I apologize. Yes. yes. Now on uh, ordinance for introduction, an ordinance of the city of Hoboken, New Jersey, amending and supplementing part two general legislation, zoning article nine general supplement regulations section 196 this 31.3 entitled Men medical can cannabis dispensaries hold up mr cohen aye mr. fusco yes on first reading mr doyle aye mrs falco yes Ms. fisher yes mrs jabor yes mr russo aye president ramos aye uh, CD4, an ordinance of the City of Hoboken, New Jersey, amending, supplementing Part 2 general legislation, a zoning Article 9 general supplement regulation, Section 196-33, entitled Medical Cannabis Dispensaries of the City of Hoboken, referring to the Planning Board in accordance with the Municipal Land Use Law. Call vote. Mr. Cohen. Aye. Mr. Fusco? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Falco? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Jabor? Mr. Mrs. Jabor? Yes. Mrs. Russo? Mr. Mr. Russo? Mr. Russo. <laughs> President Ramos. Aye. <laughs> it's a different costume. And I'm not hey. smoking either. I'm not hey, smoking. This is, this is this is 2021. <laughs> I want to see Michael in a wig. What about the... Okay, new, a new business members of the council, anyone? Yes. Council, okay. council uh, Sure, too. Uh, thanks, Council President. I just had a few quick announcements. Um, tomorrow, there will be another walk-in vaccine clinic um, happening at 221 Jackson in the community room. Um, this has been for the past couple of Thursdays and will continue to be for forthcoming Thursdays um, so that people who are getting the two shots of the Moderna can get both shots uh, in succession at those. Um, but it's great. You can just walk right in. It's open from three to seven tomorrow, um, Thursday at 221 Jackson's community room. Um, the other thing I want to mention was Hopes is sponsoring their family fun day this Friday from one to 5 p.m. at Mama Johnson. They will also be offering vaccines at that event um, as well as food and fun for kids. Um, so they're really encouraging everyone to come out um, and make it a family event. Um, and then finally on Sunday, um, we'll be having another community bike ride event. Um, we had the first a few weeks ago, um, along with the Hoboken Police Department, as well as Bike Hoboken. We had a great turnout. The weather is supposed to be really nice on Sunday. Um, and we will be meeting at 11 a.m. at Mama Johnson Field. Um, we'll go for an escorted ride around the city um, with HPD. So it's totally safe for your um, younger riders. And Jersey City, Jersey City Medical Center has donated bike helmets. So if there's anyone you know who's in need um, for purposes of the ride, um, please have them come by. Even if they don't want to stay for the ride, they can grab a free bike helmet. Thanks, Council President. Thank you. There's also a clinic on Saturday, correct? For Pfizer for 12 and 15? Yes, that one. It's also a walk-in. I think that's also walk-in. That's at the one at 605 Jackson. Yep, 605 Jackson Street. Correct. That, that's a walk-in also. And that's a, that'll have Pfizer for... Uh, 12 and over. 12 and up. Yep. The one that's at 221 Jackson will not have. It, it, yeah, it's only, it's only Moderna. Yep. Great. So, yeah. So, if you have if you have somebody from 12 to 16, send them on mm -hmm. Saturday. If so, five Jackson. Yep. So let's uh, get on top of that. Uh, Councilman Fisher and Councilman Doyle. I mean, sorry, Councilman uh, Cohen. I apologize. Uh, so, uh, three quick things. First is um, this Friday, uh, I don't know if Director Sharp is still on, but I believe um, we are confirmed to remove uh, two boats
grants from the inlet uh, in Weehawken Cove, uh, one that was recently abandoned that Hoboken Fire um, worked really hard to make sure it just didn't sink because when a boat sinks, we'll never get it again. Um, that it's been sitting in the inlet and um, as part of the uh, exercise, they're going to pull out another boat that um, isn't too far from it, which is exciting news. Um, and if anyone's around Friday, come and watch it. It's always fun. Um, second, uh, the um, just to let everyone know, the county is doing their redo of 12th Street and Sinatra Drive um, just north of 12th Street basically re-asphalting, redoing, uh, you know, the ADA corners. Um, but the most exciting thing is they're adding a speed table on the crosswalk just directly across from Pier 13. Um, we've had a lot of, you know, issues, a lot of people complaining over the years. Um, we've tried to get a stop sign there. We can't get a stop sign there. Um, and it was really uh, thanks to Jose um, Sierra from the county for coming up with the idea of a speed table, which is effectively an elevated crosswalk. And that we are hoping is going to be done in the next week or so. And then lastly, just uh, Friday um, is a uh, distribution day for the food pantry um, at the three different sites across the city from 10 to 1230. And that's it. Thank you, Council Fish. Councilman Cohen, say your hand up. Thank you, Council President. Uh, just a note on the vaccinations. Uh, uh, you can't just send the kids that are 16 and under. You've got to accompany the kids that are 16 and under. Just wanted to make that a point that uh, they, you have to be accompanied by a group. Probably bad parenting, Phil. So it's all the kid by themselves. <laughs> oh, yes, the, yeah, the kid, they can go by themselves. They just won't get vaccinated without, without <laughs> someone to join them. So uh, I encourage the, uh, the adults to go with them to that. Uh, with respect to Sunday's community bike ride, 11 a.m. Mama Johnson's Field, uh, usually my understanding is these are 20, 30 people come to these community bike rides. The last one that we had a few weeks ago was, I think, about 100 riders. The Hoboken Police Department, I want to give a shout out to them, particularly the cyclist uh, police who came out and joined us. Uh, you know, it's really fun. They close the streets down. If you're a kid who's a beginner biker, uh, and I, I don't know if Emily's kids qualify as beginner bikers, but I can tell you that they were at the front of the entire ride. They were like very front. So, uh, you know, and they're pretty young. So, so if you've got kids that are five, six, seven years old and, and, and they're just getting used to being on wheels, it's a really safe way to go. It's a great event. And, uh, you know, I encourage folks to come out on Sunday the 11th. Thank you, Ken thank you, Council President. Uh, thank you. Uh, anyone else, members of the council? Sorry, Council President, just to, um, just I wanna make sure that it's really clear about the vaccines because I didn't mean to cause confusion. <laughs> um, the clinic that's a walk-in clinic tomorrow at 221 Jackson has the Moderna, which is two shots and the J&J, &J, which, is, which is the one shot and done. You have the option of both of those. Mm -hmm. But if you are taking your child who is between the ages of 12 and 16, that has to be the Pfizer and you have to give parental consent. Um, and that is gonna be available on Saturday at 6 o'clock. Right. So sorry, right. I wanna be yep. super clear. Yep. No, thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Council I President. It. Yes, Councilman DeFusco. Thank you. Director Sharp, um, can I just get a quick update on the warrant analysis, a request for the corner of uh, First and Bloomfield Street? Uh, he, Director Sharp hopped off. I will get him to follow up with you, Councilman. Okay, thank you, Director. Anyone else? Motion to close. Right. Motion, motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone. Uh,